No, no, no. Okay, you can do whatever you want, but if you want me to let it all out, I'll, I'll let it all out. I have way more than just a podcast that I, I have video footage of her naming everyone. I have, I have base Facebook posts of her calling me a predator. I have, no, but I have like, like I've been struggling with, you can put those headphones on. We have Billy and um, our really good friend Hillary here. Oh, if you, if you put this. You go towards me. Yeah. What's that? We're starting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I've been, uh, there's this woman in our, in our, in our, um, community who's you know a little bit aggressive and she has an incredible message I, we won't name her I, i've sent her share to a lot of people online already I, I will always it's always for me it's always principles before personalities i don't care if i hate the person i don't hate anyone but i don't care if that person treats me wrongly if they have an incredible message i'm going to send that especially if you're a female I, that's the fir- my first go-to is is her shares mm-hmm. But I have like footage, like when I called her, I filmed, I filmed a lot of stuff just in case. So if I wanted to put together like an incredible story mm-hmm. of what went down, mm-hmm. like I have text messages, like shameful text messages that she sent to him. And I have Facebook messages so of her funny. calling me the a predator. character is always there ready And, and, and when, when I got on the phone with her, there was no, it was just like venom. She was spitting venom, like mm-hmm. the kind of venom that doesn't make somebody like zero forgiveness, just like just very um, aggressive, toxic. By the end of the conversation, however, it, it was good. We were we had an understanding. She was cool, but there was never any like, sorry, maybe I went too far. It, it was just more like you need to go apologize to everyone that you hurt. When the truth is that I don't know if I hurt. Like, maybe it was because you told them, maybe that's why they're hurt is because you got them to be upset Mm -hmm. when they otherwise maybe wouldn't have been. I don't know. Yeah. It's just hard. Like alcoholics get sober and they don't necessarily, I don't know, you know, we, we get sober and we don't, we're not perfect. No, I mean, there's a lot of, we're, we're, we're injured. We're injured at a very small age that we're reacting. You know, we have that core injury it's almost like i have i have my elbow is screwed up and you've tapped my elbow so the first thing i do is i try to shield myself or either i i want to become so rich and so powerful i'm going to show you or then i turn it around and i go well i'm gonna do this or i'm gonna i'm gonna be a people pleaser or i'm gonna be the best wife or i'm gonna be the best husband like all these things to shield this wound, this original wound that we have. Mm. And then once that doesn't happen, like we don't feel as if that shield has actually worked, that then we start soothing ourselves. And sometimes it's with drugs and alcohol and sex addiction and texting and gaming and mm. people pleasing and food. And- so the wound is, for example, uh, abandonment from our parents. Right, or maybe you did something that was so shameful as a child that mm. your parents was like, fucking Pat, can't you fucking get your shit together? Yeah. You're a fuck up. And that stays with me. So when into, somebody... Into my high school years, and right. now... That's your And then somebody else wound, does that, right? and it triggers that. And then that, someone and says something, hits that elbow, that's uh-huh. that original wound, yeah. you react in your way, whatever your way may be. Yeah. Like, I'm going to make sure they don't know it hurts me. So I'm going to shut down. I'm going to become silent. I'm not going to pretend I'm going to stay high. Or I'm going to become a multimillionaire. And I'm not going to be called white trash anymore. And so you do all this Success is a big one for me. No matter what we do to try to get there, it never fixes the core wound. And so when we realize in our deep dark moments of self when we're in that quiet space we realize this isn't working so then we try to soothe ourselves with drugs or drugs or alcohol or maybe we go on we we have multiple sex partners Uh or we go ahead and we become the perfect people pleaser we're going to do whatever it takes Mm -hmm. because we think that's going to soothe us or we become we become addicted to now it's texting shopping 
you know, yeah. gaming. Like there's certain ways that we try to soothe the hurt that we have inside. And then becomes this vicious cycle. Like, and we end up meeting partners our love significant others we bring into our world, I believe, and so do many other you know, therapists and what have you who have studied the pathology of people, is we bring them in to help us, and they are the ones that constantly hit our elbow until we realize that they're put in our life. To Wait, who, who hits the elbow? The, the, our the, love, our, our husband, oh, yeah. our wife. The, we the, bring yeah. these people in. The, the relationships are yeah, how Yeah, we, we get see to it. heal this stuff. Yeah. And then we get to learn. And to, they forgive us. And they, if we know they love us, we can get vulnerable. And we can, and say, and this can, is my core wound. Like, yeah. when you do this, it, it you know, yeah. but getting to that state when you're so used to building up your shielding, 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 or this armor we put on and put on that it doesn't work anymore we go out and we work 15 16 18 hours a day and we think i'm taking care of you it's like i'm actually running from me Mm. and then when that doesn't work (laughs) you mean like getting trying to become successful and validated and it's it's almost like we're unconsciously running from that and that that wound that when i become somebody else it's the bouncing ball effect when i get there i'm gonna feel better i'm not no longer gonna hurt so we bring in these people that at first we become attracted to but they are the ones that keep hitting our wounds until we realize like i'm married and my husband he hits my wound all the time Uh like he reminds me of my mother who checked out all the time mm-hmm. with drugs and alcohol, but he checks out in his own ways. Inside, he goes to silence. Uh. He goes to TV. He does all this stuff, and it just brings up all this stuff that's not even about him. Mm-hmm. So then I get so busy, I get busy, and I start doing all the stuff, and I start cleaning the house, and I start getting this done. And I, this I just, blah, 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 blah. I'm just laughing cause because I just, it's you identify. No, well, yeah, but I also just know that like so many of our new listeners are, are women hey. who are just like, hey, girlies. you're probably yeah. just speaking so their language right, right now and it's just everyone has wounds and right if i get pretty enough if i get my tits done if i get my lips done if i got for, su- my... for me it was success in the music but industry that's normally what men do yeah, because i that got be- it but it, it didn't really I when you get just as crazy and... when you get there where the fuck is there but then but then it actually works it worked for a little bit and then i started losing it but in losing it that's when i really you were, saw the shit. Mm-hmm. And that's what this podcast is about. Well, think about what I said. That's your shield. Your shield dropped. It's no longer shielding you from the original wound. You're like, dude, I'm fucked up. Uh-huh. And that's that time that we get to that place. And that's the great part about hitting our bottom. Our bottom's not saying you have to lose everything. You don't have to, you know, back in right. the day when people got sober... In the 30s and 40s, they had no houses. They, they hit bottom, bottom, bottom. And then all of a sudden, in the 50s, and 50s is when they did the 12 and 12. People still had cars and houses and all that stuff. So the bottom is not about losing everything on the outside. It's losing sense of self on the inside. And which, it, which usually is followed, which usually comes after some kind of loss. On you the have outside, to loo- right? have a loss. You are have you, to wait, have what's a... What's going on with Billy? Are you lost? Or are you... Bit. Are you focusing? Are you hearing what we're saying? Or are you just... Yeah. I mean, just you just bam right into some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right? Yeah, but Sorry. wait. So this is Hillary. Oh, hi, I'm Hillary. <laughs> Billy actually is the one who asked her mm. to do the podcast. Yeah. yeah. I'm so happy that you did. Well, you asked me a long time ago, because remember we were talking about your, your aunt and stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, trying to uh, give an idea who I am. Or H- I Hillary is, is sponsoring. I don't know. I, actually, maybe we should have talked about this before, but are you? is there anything you don't want to touch on as far as like your anonymity and stuff? I just want to... Um, no, I'm pretty... I, I just I'm pretty open. I wrote a book, so hey. Before, <laughs> we, do, before we do these, I want to respect... Billy and the anonymity of Alcoholics Anonymous. I, I think that I've been reckless when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want to 
ask that before we do it. Um, but Hillary is what you have a lot of time. I have 18 and a half years this time. Wow. Yeah. And she's sponsoring my amazing aunt who her daughter's here, Jamie. And it's, it's amazing to see my aunt have some time and she wasn't going to get a sponsor. And I was mm. like, you got to call Hillary. And then she, you had the same story as her. And it was mm. just incredible. You guys were both yeah, it's very child, serendipitous. child actresses and it's mm-hmm. just incredible. I'm just, God is just, it's a trip. AA brings everything. God, universe. Well, into fruition. It's like when you're, the teacher's ready, the student appears. Yeah. Or it's when the student's ready, the teacher appears. It's like when you're ready. That's that hitting the bottom, creating a void. You have to create a space for something else to be received in. You know, it's like we have to create a desire. There has to be di- desire to receive anything. Yeah. Like, if you don't have desire, right, you're, not right. Going, you're not going anywhere. It's like desire right. is a drive. Lack is a drive. When you don't have enough money, it creates a desire to go get money. When you don't have enough food, it creates a desire, a need, or what have you, to go receive. To eat. Yeah, so yeah. all that stuff that, you, that you, you seemingly can't have or don't have, and it seems like it's the worst thing in the world. It's like, dude, there's a pony in that horse shit. <laughs> There really is. It's like this pandemic. It's like I say to myself over and over, oh, my God, I can't wait to see what happens. Right. Like if I come from that space, I'm creating a space to receive something good. But if I stay in the, oh, no, man, my life sucks. That's that positive. You know, it's like nothing good's going to happen to me. And when you beat the drum of uh, nothing's good going to happen to me, you create more of what you think. And Billy and I have had many conversations about this, haven't we, Billy? Yeah, I mean, uh, everything I read also points to that. And and I I use it in my own life. I've been doing the uh, optimism thing, like, overboard. And Hillary told me, I was doing it saying, I'm going to have this girlfriend. I'm going to have this amount of money. I'm going to have healing in this way and that way. But she said, say, I have it. Mm. I have the girl. I have the money. I have the things. And it sounds a little bit weird, but it works. And versus pessimism where, you know, everything sucks and it's shit. And why was I dealt this hand? And, you know, I, I, I played that record for 40 years, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I like this new record and it, you know what happens and I, I, I talked on the last podcast is my consciousness switches within just, minutes geez, within minutes seconds. and then I'm joking with my partner who I'm losing talk about learning to lose I'm losing my wife for sure it's happening but we're still living together and she's the mother of my child and all this stuff and I can still just turn it around and how thankful I am to have her and what a beautiful so mom beautiful. and to be quarantined with my daughter and her mom oh yeah you you are and i'll make jokes i'll start laughing and i'll laugh and she'll laugh and it's like a freedom it's like but it's not like fuck it it's like it's all good you know and hillary kind of tossed that to me in the first place she said this loss is your god's ace in the hole and and that was like my first introduction like real simple that your loss your seemingly loss or your seemingly tragedy is god's ace in a hole meaning let's see what god can do now mm-hmm. see what he has for you i have to you have to create a space wow hillary powers what a matt what a that's name. my acting name that's a cool it's great name, it was though. my grandmother's name i'm like i'm gonna own that yeah that's if you want to follow her yeah this is cool she's such a cool oh my god she's got a scrape on her but yeah, so Billy, I, I, I mean, just the, the transformation, I don't know, it's, it's pretty inspiring. It's pretty beautiful. Well, it's inspiring for me to see because I, I know he's that guy. I know he's that dark, negative, like, guy, that, that guy. And now he's just, like, becoming this, he's talking about how this positive, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's why... The pain is good. I'm looking at the pain as good because it's the ultimate teacher. If it wasn't severely painful, I'm not going to learn and I'm not going to change. Because you talk about desire, but there's also this, well, desire to be free of pain, I guess, which teaches you. 100%. And they say it's the foundation of all spiritual growth. Absolutely. But as you guys were talking, the one thing that was going through my head that I wanted to interrupt with is 
for me, it seems like fear and control. Like the whole deal with Angela, the way I treat her and everything is this form of trying to control, which comes from fear of losing or not getting. And it's like my life is unmanageable. It's like a first step thing, Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, it's Hillary Art. H I L A R Y. And I have to A-R-T. give that up. Yeah, and that's that's totally parallels my whole thing about when I lost Hyper Crush. It's it's a it's a surrender. It's a letting go. It's you know what oh, I can't just, oh do God. this anymore. It's not up to me. Right. Yeah, that's it's not up to the me. Fucking yeah. When I was like, we always quote this Janis Joplin lyric: "Freedom's just another word, word for, for nothing, nothing left, left to lose." Mm-hmm. Nothing left to lose because I've lost everything and I'm right. learning to lose it's things. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Yeah. If you change it, like you lost your job. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's amazing. Good for you. Well, that's where we're trying to go. That's what we're doing. Like, we're we're but, selling merch that's, learn- I'll give you a shirt before you leave. It's learning to lose. I mean, that's the brand. Uh-huh. That's the lifestyle. That's the podcast. That's the, the, the it's everything. Uh-huh. And it's a new way of uh, looking at life right. and, and the journey. And it's, it's cool. And I mean, and- I went through growing up. I mean, I lost over and over and over and I turned it on myself. Until one day I was like, fuck it. Fuck it. You, t- you turned it on, on myself. Oh, like, like I thought it was my fault. Like that whole self-centeredness, that's the alcoholism. Mm-hmm. That's the, even if you're not an alcoholic, we all suffer from self-centeredness. Yeah, like we're the center. It's all, it's all. And we, we yeah. regress to our original wound, which is like, oh, I'm not lovable. No one's going to love me. I'm, I was abused because I'm a piece of shit. That means that everything that I get in my life is going to be shit. And so we keep creating more of what we think over and it over and over. It does seem like with every one of us, it's I'm not good enough. Yeah. Every one of us. Yeah. Yeah. And we live in such a vacuous world. But we don't always see it. It's like in the subconscious yeah. a lot. Like, well, I call it the elevator music. You know, when you're in the mm. elevator, you're like, dude, is that that fucking song again? Yeah, it's, it's the like, critic. You're a loser. <laughs> or or <laughs> you, know? you don't deserve, or. Yeah, or I hate you, or, or you're fat, or you're ugly, or, or you're, like you you're should, never going to get married, or, or you, you should, should have, have a husband. Or you should have or, all of it. You should, you deserve every, you're the best. Right. Why don't I have it? They yeah. don't deserve it. Yeah, so it's that elevator music that you don't even know is playing. Yeah, and you so don't know. So all of a sudden you're like, whoa. That, did, you, did you hear that song? It's been playing for, you know, 17 years. <laughs> well, for me, it's been, it's slow. Like, I mean, I'm getting, I guess it always goes deeper too. Like I'm getting insights and things now that are just kind of coming to me, probably because of the situation and stuff. But mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's hard to see what's really going on mm-hmm. in your mind yeah, way back is. in there. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 15 years of therapy, 20 years of therapy, probably. Yeah. That's one of the big pieces of for my I mean, thing. the thing is, is, I mean, I started therapy when I was 14, so 15, I think it was. Same and therapist? No. You went no. through different ones. I've, you have I, one? I've moved around a million times. Do you have one now? Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. how long have you been seeing? Is oh, it this her one, or? 12 years. Him or her? Her. And wow. then I also have seen other, like, couple therapy. God, that's and so cool. I'm not afraid to... It's like, dude, I'm in this body. I might as well look at what's underneath the hood. <laughs> you, well, what did, what did, uh, fr- like, I'm in this Carl body. Carl Jung said... Uh, Carl Jung has a quote about that. Um, ah, what is it? You're supposed to be the Carl Jung... Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up real quick. We don't have a Jamie yet. I need an IT guy that can help pull stuff up while we're doing it. But for now, it's... Um, gonna have to just be me okay cool so, so something like, about a self-examining something about the 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 scariest thing is examining oneself or something um i'll, I'll, I'll talk into it maybe i'll come up I'll, I'll quote it um the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light in the darkness of mere being um every human life contains a potential it's that potential. If that potential is not fulfilled, that life is was wasted. Now I'm just reading Carl Jung quotes. Mm. Can I be an inquisitor for a minute? Yes, dear. Okay. Inquisitor. Inquisitor. That, that's what my ex partner calls me. Um, what do you mean, your ex partner? Angela. Oh, uh, you're a friend. 
your your the your, mother of my daughter, but that's too there, many yeah. words. Easy. The, too many words. Simmer. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's a hard. It's a really hard. So when you were fourteen, where were you living? Okay, so you want to hear a little theor- uh, my uh, my uh, what is it called? Your uh, thesis statement? No, or whatever your biography. No, I just wonder what you were doing when you were so fourteen. My 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 yeah. Okay, so I'll give you an idea who I am. So I grew up in a, a very large family. I grew up in. Um, the valley in Tarzana and really, I didn't yeah, know that. yeah. I so my parents, my mother went to Holy Cross University. There's like a million Holy Crosses. No, in New York City. No, in New York, my yeah. dad went to Holy Cross too. So did my aunt. Remember, yeah, right? Is that crazy? Oh yeah, right. Kelly, yeah, did she told you we that? We talked about that. I mean, there's the so Holy Cross. Serendipitous, right? There's so many Holy Crosses. So my mother went to Holy Cross, and she got her <laughs> undergraduate at Holy Cross in English, and then she got her bachelor or her graduate at Barnard. So she was a Mensa valedictorian, very, very beautiful woman, very smart. And she went to a party one time. Her dad was the assistant district attorney of Manhattan, the only child, very, very wealthy, born with a silver, silver spoon in her mouth, driven in limousines. And so, and she was an alcoholic. So that's like a bad combo right there. Wait, now you're talking about your mom's friend. No, my mother. This is my mother. Oh, okay, okay. And then my dad, they, she went to a party one time, and she met my father, who went to West Point. And my father got his master's at West Point. That's like a big deal. Yeah, he's smart. He but was, like, what, he was isn't a, West Point like a military school? Yeah, or something? he was a Mensa. He got a full scholarship for being the top 5% ever to go through that college. Wow. So you're like blue blood stock. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> blue blood turned purple. So, um, <laughs> mixed with the blood. Um, so... I, uh, my mom and dad met at a party and my mother drank my father underneath the table and it was love at first sight. So they decided to have, get married because, you know, my dad was going to take her away, you know, fuck Disney happily ever after. I hate that princess shit. Mm. Um, so anyway, so she goes ahead and they get married and my mother had a modeling career and she had to give it up to have children. Mm-hmm. So I don't believe my mother ever wanted to have children cut to seven later. Wow. And, but she loved the feeling of being pregnant because when you're pregnant, you get, oh, my God, you're such a beautiful pregnant woman. And my mother stopped traffic. I mean, mm-hmm. literally, her energy was so stunning. And, and she was crazy, and she was brilliant, and she was a men's on. She, you know, she could out-talk anybody, and she, could, she was so pro- prolific and... Uh, so anyway, we had all these kids, and we came out to California. We were living in Chicago until I was about three years old, and there was four of us at the time. And my mother decided that she was going to pick up her career by bringing the kids to Hollywood and getting a agent. All the for, kids an agent for the kids. Yeah. So you being you being what were you like the middle one? Or I the... was this. I was the fourth child. There okay. was four of us, and I was the baby girl, and I kind of looked like. I look like Shirley Temple. And my mother all dressed us the three. That was like the thing back in the 60s. You dress them exactly alike. And Mm -hmm. um, I happened to my first, um, we walked into an agency and we got an agent. My first job I got was the voice of Sally and Charlie Brown Peanuts. Mm. Right. Big deal. Big deal back then. I had no idea what it was about. All I knew is I got out of chores when I went on interviews I got to stop off at Carl's Jr. and get a hamburger. Like, these is, this is the reason that I, I had a purpose. How old were you? I was five years old. <laughs> and I went on commercials, and I did probably around 60 nationals when I was a child. And, um, and my mother was bat shit crazy, mean spirited alcoholic she used to tell me men are useless your father can't get a right job that you're supporting the family and we had all these horses and on the outside we had like this life that you would go wow you've got all these horses and this big house and but it was like the house of horror we she wouldn't give us new underwear we would have to like eat leftovers, bring in to school. She would, we were like nightly beating. She'd wake us Whoa. up in the middle of the night. And she, she was like mommy dearest, literally. And so you start growing up, and I started getting this, like, on the outside, I was perfect. 
But when I came to my home life, it was horror. So try being an adult and trying to have a relationship where the outside, everybody thinks you're great, but in the inside, there's pain. So here's my wound, that I don't think I'm good enough, that I never measure up, I'm not smart enough. My mother used to say, you'll never be as smart as me, you'll never be as pretty as me, you'll never be enough. She, like, said that. Yeah. That's she was so talk- crazy. But that's alcoholism, like... So she was a, a, an alcoholic. Full on alcoholic. Wasn't in recovery. No, she never got it. She went to eight hospitals and she never got it. Is your mom still around? No, my mother died homeless downtown. Wow. How long ago? Uh, 2003. Gnarly. Do you idolize Or 2001, your mom? excuse me. My dad killed himself in 2005. Yeah. Your real dad. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyhow, so we had all these kids and, and this house, and none of my friends were allowed over unless they were willing to shovel the horse shit and clean the house. Like, my mother was crazy. Like, everything had to be perfect, the perfectionism. Everything's got to look good on the outside. Everything's got to look good on the outside. And in the meantime, she would tell me things like, if you don't make this commercial, you know your brothers and sisters are going to starve, don't you? So I had this huge responsibility as a child. Of finding so you were like the first one to like get some kind of success. Yeah, my mother right. was vicariously living through me. Like, but you were bringing home on the bacon for the family, for real? Yeah. Well, I mean, Charlie, my dad, Charlie Brown, a yeah, voiceover. Yeah, I made a lot of money. That's huge. I and made your, a lot of money. Your dad wasn't making money? My dad was, but my dad was trying to start his own business. And my mother would just bash him but and ho- bash ho- Wait, him. so who, who in Charlie Brown? What was the? I was Sally, Charlie so Brown's s- sister. So you had like a lot of lines. Yeah, it was great though. I mean, I got to go to the studio with Charles Schultz and Bill Melinda's and they tell me what to say and like, I can do whatever you want. So now I'm developing a character that tell me what to do. I'll uh-huh. be the perfect girl. Now wow. I bring this into later into my teenage years, in my, you know, twenties, but you know, I'm building all these characteristics growing up that I'm not enough, that when they find out about me, that they'll find out that I'm not pretty enough and I'm smart enough and I'm, I'm never going to make it. And, uh, you know, I'm a throwaway and, and I'm, I never got I love you. I never got hugged. Like I, my girlfriends used to, there was this one time I was walking home from school in the valley and my girlfriend went one way and I went the other way and a guy in a car tried to grab me. And I was terrified. I jumped over the fence, and I knew, oh, my God, I have an audition. I have an audition. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. And I was sitting in these people's backyard crying, and this woman came out. She said, what happened? And I said, this man in a car tried to grab me, and he, I got loose. I mean, God knows what would happen. And that I, shit used to happen. I know. Me too. I got yeah. away a few times, and one or two times I did In the valley, in Tarzana. Yeah. yeah, Tarzana was a fucking train wreck. And I, and I said to this woman, i got to call my mom. She's going to be mad at me. And oh. this woman said, no, she's not. Something That's happened crazy. to you. And I go, no, you don't understand. My mother's going to be mad at me. And I got, my mom picked me up, and my mom beat the shit out of me for missing this commercial interview. Mm. And so the pressure I learned to put on myself for being perfect and always on and always on time and, and making the house clean and being that person, like there's another wound on top of another wound on top of another wound. And so it's no wonder that when I was 12 and 13, I started getting high because I found something to soothe that shielding stuff that wasn't working. Mm. Becoming perfect didn't work anymore. So I start soothing myself with things that make me feel good. You know, first it was drinking and drugs, and then when I was 16, I found food, and then I was vomiting. And I mean, girls, we do these things. And we don't do it because we're bad people. We do it because there's such a deep, deep deep-seated sadness inside of us that it's scary to say, I'm in pain. Like, I couldn't be transparent to anybody because my, my message was, my mother used to say, don't reveal your feelings at all costs because it's not profitable. 
Mm. Because I would have to go into these auditions after my mother would beat the shit out of me for cutting my for biting my fingernails, and I would have to go, "Hi, my name's Hillary." When you say beat the shit, I mean, what does that mean? Like slapping around? Or oh my what? God, she was tie us to trees. She oh, would, I've been tied to a tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She would make us go out and get our eucalyptus tree. I hate the smell of eucalyptus today. Oh really? Oh yeah. And I would go out there. So that was the tree that you would get tied to? Yeah, and then she would make us get our own sticks so she could beat us. Oh, so, uh, okay. And we would wake up in the middle of the night, and she would take all her clothes because she'd be drunk, and she would she would throw our clothes all out of our all of our you know the inside the drawers and throw them and say, "God damn it, you're all a bunch of fucking slobs." And we'd have to clean the house in the middle of the so night. So was she ever sweet or loving? Um, I can remember. It's funny, you know, our senses remember certain things that bring us either joy or pain. And the only thing that I can remember is when my mother would drink all night, it was like, we don't know if we're waking up the witch in the morning. But my mother would say really sweetly, Honey, can you go get me a cup of Folgers? And so the smell of instant Folgers, sugar, and milk is a joy to me. Mm. It's the one sense of love. And I have one other remembering thing. is She would ask me when I, she was tired and hungover. She would say, will you paint my face with your finger? So I learned that if I gave, I would get love. Another characteristic that I did, I learned. If I supported you, I would get love. If I gave to you, I get love. If I shut my mouth and didn't tell my feelings, I would, you know, there would be no pain involved. So I start building up all these characteristics that I, you know, I'm building up who Hillary is. Mm-hmm. And on the outside, no one well, knew that. Wait a minute. So what about your daddy? Did he love you and give you... My dad, I was his little hill dude, but my dad was gone all the time, partially because he didn't want to try do. to keep it no further than okay. a fist away. Part like, you like can closer. Pull, it moves okay. too. You can pull okay. it if you How want to. Yeah. My dad would. My dad worked. We lived in Tarzana, and he would have to drive to Anaheim every day. You know that was a long way. Mm-hmm. My dad would work for twelve hours. He'd come home late at night. My mother would complain about the horrible things they did. How our, her, her kids be, you know, she should always say, you know, your children hit me. And it was like, oh, my God. Like, she wanted him to, ab- she wanted my dad to abuse all those kids, too. Like, it was, and we couldn't tell anybody. You couldn't tell your friends. I used to dream at night that my mother and father would be dead and I'd move to my best friend Duran's house. That was my prayer. And I hated mm-hmm. God because we get all pretty and dressed up and go to Catholic church. And I was like, if I have to believe in my mother's God, I want nothing to do with this. Mm, yeah. Good thing you don't. <laughs> so anyhow, so my mom and my dad ended up getting a divorce. Go figure. After 18 years, um, my dad was just so tired of being beaten up by my mother. Like, nothing was ever enough. So, you know, I have to really watch that in my relationship. Mm-hmm. I have to really watch my mouth. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know I start doing it. And I have to become conscious. Like, I, the great thing about Alcoholics Anonymous is it gives us a really safe world to examine ourselves as a character with a biased person who's just going to listen and help us reveal ourself to self. And we do that by, by, you know, you know, by surrendering and, and writing this stuff down. Like, I didn't want to look at this stuff. I didn't want to think about it. I just wanted to, just wanted to keep getting high or la, 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 and then talk about it. Or I'd go into a room, and I would never tell anybody about me because if they knew who I was or where I came from, they'd throw me away because my mother threw me away. So my mother and father ended up getting a divorce, and my mother wanted to get back at my dad, so she met a junkie. He called himself a chemist. 
to, he used to make. He brought crystal meth into California in 1973. Whoa. He used to cook it in our Crazy. house. Yeah, it was like back in the day, um, and she wanted to get back at my dad and started going out with this rose-colored glass hippie, and my dad was mortified. And so all of a sudden, we became the party house and and the how drug old are you, house. How old are you at this point? I'm a, at 12 years old. And it's the first time I drank beer, you know? So I, he brought like... He a, brought a total relaxed state because now my mom's getting high. My mom's not drinking because he mm, hates alcohol. How, so your mom discovered like drugs yeah. and alcohol. And she chilled out? <laughs> She chilled because he hated, my stepfather, John, hated alcohol. So she was like, oh, I don't drink. But she would start smoking pot, and she would start doing heroin, and she was doing downers, and she hmm. was second all. There was two and alls in the, in the, you know, All the Percocet, good stuff back then, yeah. All the alls, all alls, all yeah. the alls. And uh, we used to keep thinking, oh, my God, one day he's going to figure out who she is. She's fucking Wicked Witch of the West. And, the new guy. Yeah, wait. And my stepdad, I remember one night I didn't come home till like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I thought I was going to get beaten because, of course, you know, I'm drinking. I start drinking. And alcohol to me, like, I don't remember, oh, the first time I drank that drink. All I remember is my sisters were getting high, and I wanted to be a part of it. And I saw my sisters not caring, and I wanted to stop caring. And I didn't want to do these commercials anymore. And they isolated me. They thought I was like my mother's pet. I'm like, I don't want to hang out with mom. You know, I'm her slave. Like, I'm her prodigal child that she was going to get make a million dollars off. And I realized that when I got high, I didn't care. Like, it took, it kind of took the edge of sadness out. It took the edge of feeling like I wasn't enough. I just forgot about all these messages my mind was telling me of who I was as a character. And so it worked. It soothed me for a a long time. As it does. You know, it does soothe you. It works. But see, it's a double-edged sword. It's more than that. It's just fucking wonderful. It turns on you. Well, for me it was. For a while. But it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. What cuts, it destroys on one side. You know? So... My stepdad, that day when I came home at 3 o'clock in the morning, the next day, there was a watch sitting on the table, and he said, here, now you'll know what time it is when you come home. And I thought, Mm. dude, I like this guy. That was it. (laughs) That was it. Mm. So now it's like, I could do whatever I want. Well, at this time, we had moved from the valley to Lake Arrowhead, and then I started running away, and I was hitchhiking all over the place back in the day when you could. Yeah. Oh boy. It was common in the 70s. Oh, dude, it was so crazy. I would hitchhike from Lake Arrowhead to the river for the weekend. Oh, and just party and just swim party and stuff? Just party and swim and hang out with all these guys and stuff. How fun. You know, and at this time, I, de- oh I, I learned about sex. Yeah. And... You know, the first time I had sex, it was, it wasn't, it was like, is this it? <laughs> oh, is that all? That's yeah, all it is? Yeah, and the thing was, is I, it was the only time I felt somebody hold me mm. for that 10 minutes, mm-hmm. maybe eight. He was like yeah. 14 too. Mm-hmm. But for those eight minutes, he told me I was beautiful. He told me he liked me, and he held me like he wanted me. And yeah. I never received that from my family. Ah, oh, to be wanted. I think that's what, that's what I really want. I want to be wanted. Right. And so that feeling of wanting to be accepted and approved of, I chased that. That became my shielding. That became my, I'm going to have, oh, I'm going to have, I'm going to get that guy. I'm going to get that guy. You know, I wasn't that pretty at, in my teens. I was cute, but I wasn't like that girl because I there was so much shame involved with who I am. But what ended up happening is I found out that all this money that I had made as a child, my mother had spent. Hmm. And she gave it to my stepfather who had this lab. And so everything I'd ever made, and I was really angry. So 
what does a girl do when she finds out that everything she works for, that she doesn't get paid for it, and she doesn't... I turn to myself. So my first overdose, I was 14, I overdosed on Percocet because I just wanted to die. Just so that this isn't stretching so much. You're so ADD right now. I love you. Well, I gotta, He's always this way. No, 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 but you don't understand. <laughs> the, 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 the camera just stopped filming. I need to get it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he has God. to make sure everything's happening. Well, I'm like, dude, I'm posting the thing to Instagram. I'm making sure that... I love you. You're awesome. So, but but you, you were saying, and also just make sure that you're... Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't need to be like touching it, but don't try not to drift okay. too far away. All right. Because uh, your, your voice is great and your story is amazing. And, and uh, okay. so you were saying when you were 14... So I, when I was 14, I was already getting loaded, but then I found sex. And oh. I found sex was another way of feeling validation and not feeling. So it was all about me getting that, I was just saying that eight minutes of like attention and love and I'm important. But and- also like the chasing, probably. Guys wanting that and I was a, they being wanted able me. to get that and then even at last probably afterwards like I he liked me he did that and I made him feel good like probably well more I than bet just, you there's control there too because they want you so you you have control again there's so many things mm-hmm. yeah there's so many variables probably just more than eight minutes but but I, I was know, thinking he was less. 14. I was thinking no, less than eight no, minutes. No, but meaning yeah, right. like that's <laughs> the eight minutes is cool, but there's a lot of before yeah. and after right, right, lingering right. that's fit feeling that's helping you or maybe not. Maybe not so much. I wasn't even wow. on that wave late because, you know, at this time I was 14. I'd already been, by the time I was 15 years old, I had been to seven high schools. Wow. I was running away. I was being, my mother was kicking me out. I was going back and forth to mom and dad's, mom and dad's. My dad was trying to make me this. My dad, I remember, said to me, we're going to take you to a doctor and make you a virgin again. I was like, hell no. How? You can sew that shit up. Yeah. Trust me. But that seems extreme. It was extreme, but that was his thinking. He wanted me to be his little girl again. And mm-hmm. it was like, I'd already, oh, Jack in the Box had already come out, dude. Mm-hmm. It's never going to be the same. So... I um, was going back and forth, mom to dad, mom to dad. And, you know, my mom would hit me. My mom would, she would leave for months at a time and give us $20 when she would, my stepdad and her would go to Vegas and go gambling because he was a gambler too. And you we would sure have to, leave all of you guys? All seven of us kids. My brother had seven. already moved out. There were six of us. And I'd have to ask the neighbors for food. It was so humiliating. And my mother would get so angry. How Did you ever go hungry? You, Oh, yeah, we used to live on government cheese because my mother had spent all my earnings. Where'd you get it? Did you go get it? Wait, yeah, government we get food cheese. St- that's food like food stamps. Money from the government? Government cheese was a big block of fucking cheese. That's like a band, like a punk band. You can still get government cheese. Everyone knows government cheese. It's like it's shitty. It's the worst. Che- it's not even cheese. Well, not everybody, but all, it's the, like the all worst. poor folks know what that we is. We know what government cheese is. Have you heard of that band? No. It's no. like a punk band. I don't think I want to hear of it. It's like, <laughs> oh, block that one out. And then we would live on potatoes. We lived on lots of potatoes and sugar and, and, and cereals, boxes and boxes of cereals. But I would have to ask my neighbors. I would say, can, you, can we have some, can you give me some money for food? And my mother would come home from Vegas. How dare you do that? Make me look like an unfit mother inside my head. I'm like, you are an unfit mother, <laughs> you know, and the social service would come and we'd have to lie to them and say that my dad was horrible. And so we could, he, the kids wouldn't be taken away. There was just this insanity. So I grew up with this crazy, crazy. So remember, I'm becoming addicted to the crazy too. Right. It's normal to me. Who wants a fucking lily white, like calm life? Like, I, my husband is from night and day. I brought him in for a reason, y'all. Mm. You know, and today I'm at a place where it's like, thank you, God. I was just telling Billy earlier, I'm like, thank you, God, for giving me my husband. Thank you for him picking me and giving me this nice life. Like, my perception has to change. Mm -hmm. Because he's, like, just chill. He's so chill. He's, like, he hasn't been fractured. He hasn't been beaten. His parents didn't tell you you're a fucking piece of shit. You should die. His parents, like, when I was 14, my mother hit me, kicked me after I'd run away from home. And I turned around and hit her back. And she arrested me for assault and battery. And that's when my life changed. Mm. 
like in an instant. And I remember thinking... Because you finally hit her back? Yeah, I was thinking, it's done. Uh, I'm done. I'm the, the, never going like, to go home again. There's like movies about that. Like, what's that one movie where the guy like finally grabs his dad's hand or something? Everything Dude, um, shifts. My dad would have beat me until he was 70. He was such a badass, but... Dude, I was like, you know, my mom, I, I broke my arm one time and my mom said to me, you're too expensive. We're not taking you to the doctor. So what do you think I did when I was 18 years old? My mother grabbed my hair. I fucking broke her arm. What mm. do you think I said? You're what? too expensive. We're not taking you to the doctor. Oh, shit. Hurt people hurt people. Mm. I'm just giving you what I know. I mean, these are all these shameful things I brought into AA that I didn't want to talk about because I know how to look pretty and smile and be funny and all this. So stuff. in AA, you've you've looked at some of this stuff, all of it. Yeah. And I continue to I continue looking at myself as a character going, why am I acting like this? Well, we have to. Yeah. Otherwise, every I'm not, day I have to in the day I'm in. It's like when I'm uncomfortable, it's not you. It's me. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with me, not you. Uh, like you're not doing anything to me. You're just being in the day that you're in that you have hit my elbow and you don't even know it. You don't even know you hit my elbow, but I attack you as if you've done it on purpose. Mm. And really, like in my own case, I was a bit of a monster. Like, you know, you say we're self-centered, right? Like you can't. You don't see what you're doing. You think it's them. It's a protection. Yeah. That's but the shielding. It's hard to break through that because I was sober over a decade. You well, know, some people wake up a little on differently. The well, I think I was waking up the whole time, but you know, people with stories like ours, it takes a while. Man, totally. I thought it was still it was all. So I I ended up you know going to juvenile hall. I left juvenile hall. You know, Wait, why'd you go to juvenile hall for assault and batter? My mother arrested me. Whoa. For how long? I was there for six weeks until my mother decided to, I learned my lesson. Hey, that's a long time for a kid. For a kid. It's, it, really, it was summer. It, it was like, the summer. Yeah. that's. A and I got deal. released and they said, listen, you're incorrigible. We can't, we can't keep you home anymore. Um, do you, is there any home that you can go to? And I thought my best friend Melinda will take me in. I'm going to call her parents. And so they fostered me. And the reason why they fostered me is because the dad was having sex with my best friend and wanted to have sex with me. Jesus. So it's like one frying pan into another. But wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So the dad wasn't his daughter. No, uh, uh, he was stepdad was okay. having sex with her. And, oh, it's so crazy. But and, he, but and wait, 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 wait. So was she down with it or not down well, with it? You know, there's a lot of power in having sex with your stepfather. I'm sure. Wait. But. Oh, wait. So Melinda was having sex with her stepfather. She used to say, I have this older boyfriend. And she used to tell me these stories. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. She goes, yeah, he takes me shopping all the time. And I get anything I want. But this was her stepdad. I didn't know that until I moved in. And then she revealed the secret to me. Uh. And she revealed the secret. She's like, I don't want to do it anymore. And he tried to, like, hook up with you. Yeah, he was like, Melinda's not sleeping with me anymore, maybe. And I was like, mm-mm, I don't think so. Uh, how and old were you guys at this point? Fifteen. Oh, but I thought you said you went to juvie at 18. No. 15. No, you go to jail when you're 18. But you said when she hit you, you... I was... No, that was later on. That's a later story. Oh. It's like, her. you know, I want to get back at her, so I go back to the original crime. So so when you were 15... Or I went to Jibbana Hall. I because, got out of Jibbana Hall. Because you hit her back? Mm-hmm. So I... Um, so what would that... What did that look like? She... she what, what? How did that... She well, hit you or something? Oh, she kicked me in the back. And she told me, what the fuck are you doing in this house? You're another mouth then, to feed. And then you did I what? said, I am so sick of this. And, then, and I cold cocked her. Like with your fist? Oh, yeah. Knocked her out. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then she called the cops and had you go to juvie. And but did the you tell the cops, is, like, yo, she fucking is hitting she me? didn't matter. She called the cops. Yeah, but did you say, like, there, she's the hitting me? The funny thing happened is I gave up. I knew that this was the only way out of my home. Mm. I thought, 
I'm leaving. I'm just wondering though, did you say that she was abusing you? Yeah, but they don't care. She's... Wow. It's like that fucking Fernando that her. Yeah. The, the, what's the, what, what's the documentary on Netflix? Melendez or? No, it's. it's oh, the. Oh, for, Fernandez. I know, Aaron the Fernandez. Cool, the kid, the Yo. Kid. And like the cops. This is even. Because I think back then, it was they a lot different. They, but they now. They didn't want to get involved back then. They just yeah. kind of want to sell family disturbance. Eh, you're having issues. I don't want to be but, a part but of the it. But F- Fernandez. Is it Aaron Fernandez or? And I can't remember. What was that kid? The kid that was beaten to death? You know what I'm talking. You mean the oh. recent one? The yeah. Recent thing? yeah. But that that one, it's just an incredible Netflix documentary about it's like so this intense. kid. It's like was I so cried obviously. and cried. Yeah. Yeah. The, the kid- it was very obvious back then. I mean, the neighbors used to say, "There's that's the house of horror." But but back in the seventies. People didn't get into other people's business. They were just like the murdered. trials of Gabriel Fernandez. Yeah, poor baby. And 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 and, and he, uh, you know, he would say like, you know, like uh, I'm not a bad kid, or my mom was hitting mm-hmm. me, and then they were just like they didn't really. And then it's before just you people know, just he's like don't want to get. In, yeah, this kid just so, he showed up to the ER and, and the ER. So sad. The ER I got and, that. I felt that that whole documentary uh, really got me to my core. Yeah, I'm sure the ER nurse was like doing. Um, she was writing down all the things that was was wrong with the kid, and she couldn't believe it because she was like, "This is six months old. This is new. This is nine months old." He had more shit on him that it was, she couldn't even, she was crying when she was just, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, dog. Can I get a fork? Jesus. Sorry, my stomach is. Your waitress. Um, Excuse me, waitress? This is not something that happens normally, but she was just making these proteins. That was so sweet. They're proteins. You're such a lovely Uh, wife. We, 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 where's mine? No, I'm just you are not worthy. (laughs) Um, So, so I ended up, so what ended up happening is this. I decided I was going to help Melinda get out of this house. So I told, we told the mom that we were going to go stay at a shelter. And the mother was just like beside herself. I don't know why you're leaving. I don't know why you don't get along with Pete. Now, mom I, had no idea what was going down. Denial, denial is amazing. But she told her mom. No. Okay. There's, a, there's power in that. Yeah. Remember, she was getting everything she wanted. She got new clothes all so the time. So nobody told the mom, yo, no. your husband is like sleeping. No, with it's crazy. So I'm sitting on the, I've been sitting on one bed. We had two twin beds. You know, and I'm doing, I'm getting high. I'm okay. huffing paint at this time. I'm eating acid. I'm like, I'm doing anything. That was so loud. You know, huffing dog spray. I mean, flea spray yeah, in a rag. Yeah, I was like, anything God. to get high. Me too. Yeah. I used to huff the air conditioning vent. Oh, Life whatever. Ball. I yeah. remember, yeah. My buddy, was... like, passed out on that behind the fucking air conditioning. I used to like, do that all you... the time. It's like, zzz, it's like, oh, God, that was awesome. Let's do it again. No. So... Not to feel, not to feel. So I was sitting on this, ta- uh, this, this single bed, and she was sitting on the other one, and, and Margarita was the mother, was standing in the, I still remember this like it was yesterday, in the doorway, and she's like, I just don't know why you're not getting along with Pete. Why are you leaving? And Pete comes walking up behind her, and he said, you know why she's leaving? And why I don't get along with her? Because I've been fucking your daughter for the last three years, and this bitch has totally disrupted our family. Another message I got. He said that? It was crazy. What, this, did he have to like relieve, confess and relieve his guilt or something? 100%. Or? And, the, and Margarita said, get your shit and get out of here. He ended up getting arrested and going to Patton State Hospital for child molested nice. for four years. That's so gnarly. But you would think that my friend and I would bond to this. No, we got in fist fight. She hated me because the dynamic of the whole family shifted. I get a uh, paper Because towel. the power was taken away. Mm. So at this time, I didn't know where to go. I was going to her another... another uh, wow, so you guys became like... Enemies. Oh, that's so like... Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah, the scapegoat so became became. She just couldn't scapegoat. like she couldn't deal with it or whatever. Yeah, and there had to be a bad guy, and I got it. Uh-huh. And I was the bad guy in my household. I left my household, and all of a sudden, there, we're poor now because Hillary's not working. So I'm constantly thinking I'm the bad guy. I fucked up. I and, fucked and up. And also, you got to remember the '70s was different. Like, 
I don't want to sound like an asshole here, but no, it it's wasted. almost normal to pimp yourself out to be an actress or an actor or like mm-hmm. it, that's just given. And, that's and it was a lot more freedom back then too. Like people weren't, they didn't, Different it's world. not like it is Different now. World. And that's why Hillary's like, you're really big on that stuff. Like, have you seen the Apple TV documentary or the movie, the morning show? No, I haven't seen it yet. Have you even heard of it? Yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. I don't, I haven't watched that one yet. Yeah, but dude. This is like about that, that uh, newscaster guy, right? That that got in trouble for having sex with the 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 um the the girl that he worked with. I don't know. I'll have to check you, it out. What, what was the guy's name? It's the best. But but anyway, it's like How's it's it? like the uh, he's cruising. He's, he's right over there. What's up, bro? It's fucking amazing. I'll have to Jennifer check it out. Aniston. Gen- Jennifer Aniston. But like, she sent me something. Oh, I saw her not too long ago. You sent me that thing on Instagram, which I had actually just been sent by a guy I work for with my old, my good, really successful friend. He said this video is amazing. Which one? The woman, the one that got taken down. Oh right, the, right. The, that was such a cool, and she's um. And actually, I sent you something back that you never responded to, this WeWork I, thing that we did. Uh, Sorry. Uh, did, did you not see that? We did... I don't think I saw We it. did a video for uh, 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 this company called Sparks, and it's all women. It was a really cool like um, empower, women empowerment video that we did. It was like... Uh, and I sent it back to you. I don't think I saw it. Because I obviously was like... Because something, I said something and um, you were like, remember at the meeting when I said something? Oh, I said something about women. There's, there's not enough women directors. Oh, right, right, and right, right, I right, said, right, right. I said, look, while, there, while some of my favorite directors are women, Sofia Coppola. Right, right, right. Catherine Bigelow. Love, like yeah. Catherine Bigelow is James Cameron's ex-wife yeah, she's who did The awesome. Hurt Locker she's and yeah. Point Break. Yeah. The Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty. She's, She's one amazing. of like the gnarliest. Like when you see She's Zero cool. Dark Thirty, I think I sent her my my my. Oh, uh, you know what's up? No, I think I. No, sent I just think her, it's cool that you know who that is. Yeah, I but, sent her my um, memoir, and I think they passed on it. Wow, but but the thing that I'm saying is that like when you watch Zero Dark you made Thirty, a mistake. Okay. It's like more <laughs> gnarly and visceral. You're like, you can't believe that a woman. It's just like gnarly. It's right. like women can do more. And then I, I was sharing with you that the, the some of my best, the people that work for me that I can count on the most are the females. Actually, Kurt, Serena just did our little uh, our trailer for our little this little reality show we're trying to pitch, mm-hmm. and she crushed it. And yeah, they, because we can multitask. We can see. I don't know. I we just have a different. Totally, our brains built to live multi, multi multi. Some of the best editors are women. Yeah, but be, but oh, like Martin Scorsese's editor is a woman. Well, Lawrence of Olivier was cut by Miss Hickox. But she was like. But what I was amazing. saying was that I don't think most women mm-hmm. are. Like, for whatever reason, maybe it's culture, maybe it's whatever, but are like, are able to be the kind of assertive person you need to be to be a director. And I don't think that most women want necessarily want to be directors. I think some do. I think you're definitely an alpha personality. I wouldn't woman. want to be a director. I want to be on a. But TV I'm just show saying as that, as that might be. I want to be an actress. That's but where what I'm, I'm saying so. is that might be a part of the reason why there's more male directors than women directors because I just think that men, there are women do have different attributes no, than men. Dude, women, we are getting women, into the shit that's all all like the current bullshit. Yeah, the, well, right that's now. because we haven't, a, we haven't been asked. We haven't right, been allowed that, into the party, and we now we've just pushed our way yeah, in. And that we're like, too, dude, it's happening. It's on. Yeah, that too. You know, we we not only got ourselves in the party, we decorated it, baby. <laughs> you know well, I mean? But like, but I'm is a, it is it safe to say that men and women are different? Yeah, sure. Our brains are built differently. That's okay, what I'm because saying. it's not really safe to say that in like the probably the millennial generation or whatever. But I just want to I want to no, say I don't that know if it's there, they we are our brains are different. If yeah. you actually look, no, at I, it, I believe it a hundred percent. Therefore, women can do things better than men. Some well, things, and different. Men can do some things yeah. better than women. Well, men, men can be more. You guys can be more. You guys have a have a. 
I've got a point. I'm going to go from A to B. You're very linear, so you can go for it. We're like on our way, and we go, oh, look at the pretty picture. we got to go get this. i got to pick up the kids. i got to wash my hair. I gotta, but blah, sometimes blah. you need to notice well, what's affecting. Also, I believe, sorry, who wants to st- you want to go? No, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I believe that women are emotionally driven. Like they think a little different, or most. Uh, they, they. We're sense oriented. Which is like a great thing. Which We're I'm sense-oriented. out of touch with because I'm analytical and like mm-hmm. detached where a woman like, are, they're interested in people. Well, like, because women, emotions. women react on the right side of the brain, which is mm-hmm. the and also they can read like spiritually they side. can read like twice as many facial expressions as men. There's been tests mm-hmm. like so, so. My point is, yeah, they. That's my point. Thank no. you. I love you, Billy. <laughs> no, but like that's what I'm saying is, ladies and gentlemen, Billy. There is a difference, <laughs> and it's okay to be like, yo, this is a good job. For a man, I mean, just lifting a lot of weight is right, better for yeah, a man. I right. mean, it's that simple. And it's then very women, easy for you. It's like, a, oh, cool, great. Like well, lifting something heavy. Like men are just like have more physical strength. Mm-hmm. And then like women. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I, I definitely. It's not that we can't do it. It's just that, you know, I mean. It's not a bad thing. But It's not a bad thing. Yeah, but hold on. Let me finish. Okay, finish. I just want to make sure that when we're talking about these kinds of things as a society. Mm-hmm. We're not just, we're not like forgetting about that part. You know what I mean? Like, what's that part? The part that that we are different, and it is okay to have sp- certain specialties as a man or as a woman. Right. And just because more women aren't doing a certain particular thing that men are doing, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing because because they're not interested. And in also, it. the bearing children thing is like the most important thing that any human being can do and only women can do that therefore yeah therefore that is like definitely one of women's purpose and it's such a incredible valuable purpose to have and like don't minimize that as a woman Mm -hmm. like jordan peterson talks about this yeah and and where it comes up for me is like uh, for me being a man you can just fuck me and you know be part of my life and i'm happy but for a woman for angela she needs kisses. She needs to be told she's beautiful. She needs to feel cherished. Right, of course. There's we, like this whole emotional thought, thing that men don't really have to have thought, as much. But they do need it. I they do think, need it, yeah. but not like... But the, not it, because you have to remember that a woman falls in love through her ears. You fall in love through your eyes. Yeah, you got to talk. Mm. You got to talk, too. And we, wow. We miss you. No wonder Veronica fell in love we with me. We missed you. Because I just talk. <laughs> We miss you through your presence. You miss us through your absence. There's such a different... Wow. Hey, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, when a man doesn't see a woman, he longs for her more yeah, and more. Yeah, me too. That's how and I And so, am. you know, there's a great, there's a great uh, therapist and many people. If you have a chance, it's called Getting to I Do Women. And it's just kind of really... Getting to what? I Do. It's by a, a woman named Pat Allen, Dr. Pat Allen. Mm. And she really breaks down... The getting camp, to I do. getting to I do, like marriage. Yes, right. And how we really, a woman, we we produce a, a drug called we have we have hormones in our system. We have estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, um, at, um, estrogen, progesterone, and wow. we have we produce oxytocin. a thing. We produce the oxytocin. Oxytocin is the same thing that women get when they're pregnant. They get yeah. this euphoric feeling. It goes in their nipples, so it doesn't hurt when the baby suckles on it. Mm. What's well, not supposed to, and we become bonded to what it, we produce it as soon as the dick goes into our mouth, down our throat, in our vagina. As soon as we kiss them, we can start producing it for this man. So we become attached to them. Now, men don't necessarily produce it for the woman. Mm -hmm. So it's like back in the old caveman days, the man would go leave for nine months. The woman would still be devoted to this man because she's still producing this stuff. Mm. So if I'm with you for... If the only way that you can stop producing it is start producing it for someone else. That's what Angela's done. She's already bonded to another man. Yeah. So that's why if the old saying, if you want to get over somebody, get under somebody. That's where that old saying came from. Yeah. Hey. Uh-oh. Howdy. Hello. So. <gasps> Hi, Carol. Oh, my God. Hi. I didn't know you guys were doing this 
Yeah, 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 yeah. come sit down. <laughs> Hang out if you want to. How are you guys? Hi. I know you're behind. What are we doing? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. We can't find. Hey. Hi. That's awesome. So we so we produce it for we start producing it for men. That's why we become bonded to the guys. So if I break up with somebody and I don't start producing it with somebody, if I'm with them for five years, it's going to take me two and a half years to get over them. Unless you find someone else, right? Because if I see them, taste them, touch them, hear them, and feel them, my senses, I start producing it for them again. But what if that man, you don't t- touch, see, or feel, you just talk to that man? We're keeping, there is still a bond, but she's already producing it for somebody else, so you've yeah. been kicked off the shelf. Yeah. That's why it's okay for her to stay in the house while you're there. Yeah. That's why it was so uncomfortable for her to be with you before she met this guy. What do you mean, be with me? She was so angry you were around because she was still producing it for you, and all of a sudden she becomes euphoric with this another person. Yeah. It's switched. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. But anyway, this book is great if you want to learn how to... I've heard a lot about Pat Allen. She used to do seminars over yeah, here. Yeah, she used to do it a lot. I uh, went to it millions of times. Bill Galvin used to Yeah, go. but the key is to stop sleeping with the guys. Like, don't sleep with them. Like, get to know them. Make them, like commit to give you a committed oh, monogamous right. uh, exclusive relationship before you like sleep with them yeah. but see i was already giving up the goods because i was hoping to get a hit that's what sex does it gives you a hit it's like the drugs give you a hit yeah i'll go back to the story so so i ended up leaving i found a guy who hello thank you disney was gonna take me and we're gonna live happily ever after Oh, that's angela right now yeah we're gonna live happily ever after Cut to the guy ends up beating the shit out of me. You know, the, all the money I make, I get a little inheritance from my grandmother. I buy him a Harley, of course, because I want, I have to buy him love. I learned this as a child Crazy. in an old Impala, and I learned this as a child. And then he beats me up, and then I have to live so in my car. Crazy. You know, 18 years old. By the time I was 21 years old, I was done. Is that when you got clean? I got clean at 21. I, I, had, uh, I had gone to this little. So did I. You did? First time. So I went, uh, the first right. time I got sober. So I had gone to this little medical college in California, paramedical and technical college, got my little LBN license, phlebotomist license, because I was going to go save the world. I was going to become that. W- what is that? That means you can blood. take blood and work at an allergy clinic and be a back office nurse. Of course. I'm going to save the world too. Are you really? Well, I was trying well, to. Well, I mean, sa- that's what this is save this a couple is, people. Yeah, you're being of service. Yeah, maximum I mean, service that which 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 is crazy because Carl Jung talks about this too. If you can affect one person, that person could go and save the world, or they could affect someone else. Well, it's so, like having this this uh, pandemic. If you have it, you can affect three people, and so on and so on. Whatever, <laughs> right? That's why the six degrees of separation is great. <laughs> so so I ended up at twenty one years old. I'm working at this doctor's office. I become what I hate the most. I become my stepfather. What do you think I'm doing? I'm working at this bariatric clinic, which is a weight control Can you clinic. Guys keep it down. And I am selling speed outside the back. Doctor's Wait office. a minute, like illegally? Well, this doctor was a well, bariatric. You can't. How can you sell do it any other way? Speed. So I right. was I mean, taking the medicine. Oh, right. I was taking the medicine that the doctor was prescribing and I was selling it. And I became my stepfather. Mm. I hated him for being a speed drug dealer. But yet I became well, what you, I hated you, the most. But, you learned how to do it. But see, that's it. It's like hurt people hurt people. Mm. I'm not doing things that I came up with. I'm doing things. Children do not learn by being told. They, they are led by example. So if they see a parent drinking and beating their wife, what do they do when they get married? They yeah. drink and beat their wife. How do you not repeat that pattern? You, it's called it's consciousness. Are, it's, are there any people who don't repeat the pattern? Like Tons of people. They make a conscious... Yeah, but like, I'm, I'm saying not by making a conscious decision to change it, but are there any people that just don't repeat the pattern? Well, yeah, they make, you know they I mean? become so, they take that defiant energy and I'm never going to be like them. They, they yeah. take, it's called self-righteous anger. 
Uh. It's not just anger. When you have the anger, you repeat. When you have a self-righteous anger, you do the opposite. But it's out. It's still out of anger, and it's not exactly. It's not out of love. It's It's like I'm not going to be like them. I'm going to give my kid everything. I'm not going to starve my kid. But little do you know that you're actually hurting your child. So the only way to really become whole and healthy is to look at it. Is to look at the, 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 the pain. Well, yeah, you have to become, you have to wake up. It's like, you got to wake up, dude. Yeah, you have to see it. You have to That's see. That's that hitting bottom. Bye. Bye. Sorry, like, uh, call me. I know I'm a bad sponsor at, right? Or no, I'll call you. <laughs> Sponsy. Um, <laughs> that's sponsorette. My sponsorette. Oh my God, that's like a cheerleader. Hey, I'm a cheerleader. My aunt just walked in and uh, She's so cute. Hillary's sponsoring her because my aunt actually was a child actress also and her mom took all her money too. Yeah, it's very similar. She was like a dancer, singer, and, and it's just, yeah, it's a lot of the similar stuff, you mm-hmm. know? And she's insecure and she's tried she's to great. kill herself. And yeah, we all do that. A lot of stuff. Yeah. So I so I got sober at 21 because I was on a I went into a grandma seizure on a fire escape in Venice. I had dro- I had quit my job because somebody I had sold drugs to was in a coma in the hospital, and I thought I was going to get busted. And I just quit the job, and I tried to kill myself. I tried to overdose on Valium, and mm. a, a woman who worked at the see this is the God stuff. When you go, there's no God. It's like bullshit. How can you say there's not? Like this woman worked for suicide prevention and she had been to my house one time and I had taken a hundred Valium and she knocked at my door Hmm. and she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm killing myself right now. And it was like, throw that shit up. It was like, how does that happen? So you had just taken them? Just taken them. How did you take a hundred? A hundred volume, ten, fives, uh, or? Yellow. Yellow one? Just literally gulped, door knock, open the door. But like, how did you take that many? Was it like a few different? Dude, I can do anything. When you're vomiting, when you're bulimic, ladies, you know this, you can shove <laughs> so much food down your throat and that shit comes up quick. But like, was it, how many handfuls was like it? Like three handfuls. Okay, right. Just like, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Is food still an issue for you? Um, not so much. Like I eat food and I'm like, oh, well, this is it. I am who I am. Um, there's still the body dysmorphic ladies, you know what I'm talking about where you look in the mirror and you go, Oh my God, I'm such a fat pig, you know, but it's that, you know what? I'm okay. I'm 50. I'm going to be 58 next month in June. I'm going to be 58 and you know what? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, you are. The drugs preserved you. (laughs) No, I have it. I have it too. You know what? I think prayers preserve me. Yeah. It renews your spirit. Well, they say prayer is the only thing. Prayer is from the inside out. Change the care. I actually just last night got. I was watching a TV show. I got out of bed, got on my knees, and started praying and being yeah. thankful. The and, only thing that could change was just your like character is God. Up. I was like yeah. in my head with in fear and mm-hmm. you know anxiety. I, mean, yeah. and I just started praying. Fuck yeah, dude! I'm so into it. And the thing is, my friend told me it's all prayers. Everything you think. Yeah, I prayers. did today. I did today. So you could be doing negative prayers too. Yeah, you're throwing anything. Up in the you're, air. Anything you're thinking or saying is sort of like a prayer. Mm-hmm. So that's why. He's making a decision today. I put every half an hour. I put on my phone. My alarm kept going off, and I kept going. God, God, please help me be the a wonderful wife. Help me be a great friend. It's like, oh, my mind's telling me that I'm never going to make it. Can you please take that thought from me? Like, it's really being conscious in the day I'm in. Because how many times have you driven down the road and you're like, D- I just, I'm already here. How did I get here? Yeah. I'm already here. That's like you're asleep while driving. Yeah. We have so many people today that are absolutely sleepwalking. Yeah. Well, that's a true gift to be awake because I drove through Canaan today and after the fires, you know, and, and now all these, have you seen the flowers and stuff? They're stunning. It's um, unbelievable. Oh God, and like the carpet good. has been <gasps> removed and you can so see all the rocks beautiful. and the skate. It's so beautiful. Mm. It's so beautiful to be in the day you're in and the moment you're in. It's like there's so many things gifts to be offered to you when you're awake and that is available it takes work but we've all done it and it works yeah but it's not even that much work it's like you know when you go 
I'm going to say, first it because is. there are a lot of women on this. It's like when you go shopping, like you just know the next thing to get that'll make, that'll go with that next outfit. It's like the same feeling of like when you start your awake, you're like, oh, and then I want to do this. This will feel good. Oh, and, and then I want to talk to my friends about this and I'm going to read this book and I'm going to, I'm going to pray this way. I'm going to check out this church or I'm going to check out this thing. And it just becomes the next indicated thing. You get you start getting high off. Well, it. when it you're in the zone, high. yeah, yeah. But it's when you're not in the zone, it, it... but then it's like you know we were talking earlier and we we're saying that life is so black and white. If you look, I went to art school. It's actually not. Wait a minute, I went to art school. There's only one percent black and one percent white. Yeah, it's crazy. Those the are just other, the ends of the spectrum. The un- 98%. Of, yeah. There's different shades. That's what we try to go for. We need to get different shades. Yeah. Um, it's funny when you... Because just, I just feel like there's a theme here about looking at your pain and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just kept... I just keep thinking about this quote. Your, your, your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. Mm-hmm. Who looks outside dreams? Who looks inside awakes? Carl Jung, Mm. everything that his, um, all these quotes are just so incredible. And there's, I think there's another one that I'm, that that's even more relevant to like recognizing, like we'll do anything to avoid looking at our pain, something along the lines of that. Mm. But like, yeah, as far as all the trauma you've been through looking at it in AA and like coming to terms with it, what would you say? Are, are like the um, the conclusion that you've come to like I, I'm not what I've done uh huh I'm not I'm not what happened or to what's me. been done to you or what's happened to me right you're just what you want to be or what you what you when I get out of self mm-hmm. is the kind of goal that we do to get when we get sober we get away from the addiction we get. We look at our mind as a power and how our mind talks to us with authority and ego and self and the alcoholism. And then we go into the second step. I'm going through the steps, you guys. Second step is like came to believe. It's like I'm starting to wake up. Mm-hmm. I'm coming to, I'm starting to wake up. That I come to believe in a power greater than me, which has already told me in step one that my brain is powerful. My mm-hmm. disease is powerful. My addiction is powerful. And it's, it's the wrong power. But my, I came to believe a power greater than me, so there's something even greater than my addiction and my mind power disease, could restore me to sanity. Main, it's possible. Are you hungry for it? Do you want to do it? Mm-hmm. And then the third step is turn, made a decision. Now, we all know I can't make a decision unless there's an action followed. Mm-hmm made a decision Uh to turn my will, which is my outside activity, and then my life, which is my inside life, my thought life, my the the things I believe about myself and my beliefs and my my principles, which is just a belief I believe, is something I believe in. And then the action is I gotta get it down on paper, like write down what happened. Like it was so painful for me to write down the stuff that happened to me as a child. I wanted to bury that and pretend like it didn't exist and just go on my happy little way. But but, but just right there, so people understand that don't know about the steps real quick. The first three steps are just like, Oh, I'm fucked. Maybe there's a God, and then like, all right, cool, let me just... I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try. I'm I'm going to see if there is. Yeah, I just feel like people have this like this idea in their mind of like these steps and they're like this like thing and they require all this work. It's just like... They're in order, so you don't have to do it all in overnight. Yeah, but like... one at a time. But here's the other thing. You do it all every day yeah, too. You yeah, don't just yeah. do the steps. It's a way of life. Yeah, all, yeah it, it, it's a treatment I, in the day that you're in. I just think it. that they, they 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 become an overcomplicated. Like all they are is like a little like outline of like a, 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 um, an application, a way to apply like looking inwardly. 
Mm-hmm. It's and like finding out your shit so that, but, and but the but, day that you're in, it's like, oh yeah, my. that's all it is. Like, what's my part? And like, how can I be better? And like, but I can't really see that unless I have humility and I actually can't really see it on my own either. Someone else the, self can't reveal it. Yeah. Yourself, so I need so. to have this like thing, this God thing, which is just kind of like a, and when I'm tapped into something else, it's yeah. like almost like my voice is not the strongest voice. I start listening to something other than me. Remember that's the power other than you. So when I have that conscious contact throughout the day, I can go, oh, God, there I go again. I'm, I, fucking, I'm becoming a cunt. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's almost not even like so much about the other power as it is like just not you. Oh, it's like, yeah, like you the power I mean? like, is just, just, necessary because if you don't have the higher power, then the only power you have is the power of self and you can't see through the power of self. You no. can't fix self with self. So yeah. you need And your this. ego yeah, goes, yeah. I... Um, the only thing the ego really wants to be is God. It wants to be God. Uh, of oh, your life. That's where the control thing comes in for totally. me. It, uh-huh. you, ego wants to I be wanna God. I want to control it all, make it all happen. Yeah. You know, it's like, but I can't. You know, it's like yeah. with you and Veronica, you're like, I can't, I can't stop her from getting high. It's like, dude, there's well, such... I don't even like wine, yeah. There's such a I sense mean, of... <sighs> Exhale when you go, you know what? Just let them do what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like there's such a sense of, I don't have to be in control because the ego needs to be in That's control. what's saving me right now. Thank God Angela found something. She's probably right. She's helping us all. Like when I switch it, God bless her. She's getting what she needs. You know what? And it's going to create a void and a lack in your life so you can create a space to get what you need. Mm-hmm. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, but, but also lack. it takes it takes away the pain right here and now. Right. What does? Thank God she found somebody she likes. Yeah. What wow. if you go to that? It's God like, bless her. I hope it God works out. Thank God my husband's over there. He's just getting high and he's hanging out. Did he? <laughs> I don't know. But that's his joy. He's finding well, his joy. Why do I want to not have him fucking have his joy? Yeah. Because my ego wants to be in control and wants to be right. It wants to be. It wants it you wants know, to and do this, do this, do this. We just forgot walks. to say that the alcoholic mind, or maybe even just a neurotic yeah, person's curious. mind, <laughs> is problematic. It only sees the problems. It doesn't. Well, see I'm the a good. fault finder by fault nature. Finding. I'm fault finder. I'm a doom and gloom. I'm a you know. I'm a catastrophizer. I'm always looking. I grew up in that world. So it's never like... I was how, always waiting for the other foot to fall. Oh, the other drop. shoe. Yeah, it yeah. Like, always. Oh my God, what's going to happen That's how now? I went into our marriage. That's why it didn't go because I knew it wasn't going to last before it started. Mm. You know? Yeah. And and yeah. then you have to get to the point where is there a point of me that's creating it not to the last? But that's well, the whole yeah, joy the in whole finding thing. out. It's like... Nothing happens in God's world by just mistake. If you make a decision, you know what? I'm going to live in a faith. I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna go for this trust shit. I'm going to go for this faith shit. Like, if I actually make a decision, and then I act as if I'm going for this faith shit. You rock. Thanks, dude. <laughs> He's so yeah, funny. He's go smoke. I want She's him to be happy. Show. I want him to be happy. No, like that's like, the, like the, a the, shift the, in me. You know, it's yeah. a shift in me. Like I have to be. I have to surrender to win. Yeah. And you could look at it this way. You know, thank God he's here and he's patient. And he's such he's a doing, good guy. You know? Oh, my God. Thank you, God, for giving me such a great house. He's such a great. He is so good for me. He allows me to do this. How old is he? He's my age. Oh. Yeah, he he. He's he, a good-looking guy. He's pretty hot. I mean, I walked in. I was like, "Who's this cool guy?" Like, yeah, it's my man. He's you guys are awesome. Yeah, that's he's a great so guy. fucking cool. And yeah. and 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 just to touch on the, sometimes I want to be on the same wavelength as her, and I think sometimes it's cool if she's not high, also, which is okay, and I can mm-hmm. tell her that. And mm-hmm. but it's really not that big of a deal. Um, you know, it's all good. I think it's that 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 surrendering thing. It's like, yeah. I mean, like right now. Like, do I want to be right or I want to be happy? Like, this is my podcast. I want him to be a part of it with me. But like, I need. I, I'm like, throughout the podcast, probably like thirty <laughs> times. You want some water? You can get some more water from the fridge. Okay, where is it? Just go ahead. That that little oh, cup. Oh, the fridge totally. is over on the other side. You'll see it in the kitchen. I've thought, do, oh, do I need to like help 
this, uh, dude, and I just, uh, I just give up. I've get, I just continue to surrender no matter what I'm doing. This is the quietest I've ever seen you on a podcast, except for when, uh, what's her name was here. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the other guy, Jared talked a lot and, and that water guy was talking a lot. And oh, that's true. Um, but, uh, but here's something you taught me too about the relationship is they, I think it, that's like good sparkling mineral water. I'm all over it. Okay, cool. <laughs> the, the thing that's so bitching about the partner is all that pain they cause you by touching your elbow. You're using the elbow thing is they are forcing you to become a better person. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. I know, you know what kidding. I mean? Like they're making you a better know. person by being there and triggering you yeah. and making you grow and change and not be so self-centered. But God, and that's where we go. Thank hey, God that Angela was in your life. Thank God, man. She has fucking trained me good. She, she's, you're making, he's, she domesticated me. And first your next, your next indicated step. That's cool. If we yeah. could just look at it. But like see, this. that's the whole thing. But the ego keeps rebuilding itself, and then all of a sudden, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. <sighs> like I got to tell you, I'm on my third marriage. Okay, okay. You know, my <laughs> first husband was an ex drug dealer. Your first, my first. He's a great guy, though. Before I, you got sober? No, when I first got sober, I married somebody. I was 23 years old. He was 36. So were you married? So so you didn't get married till after you got sober? Yeah, or the first I got time. So, first time I was sober. I got sober in '83 and got loaded in '94. So I had a bunch of time and then I had, God, what a fucking story. Like what a, <laughs> it was great. I, 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 but would... I went back to high school and I got my, I went and got my GED and then went to college and then I went to UCLA Damn. and then I got a job in the film industry. I didn't want to be an actress cause I didn't want to be. I mean, we haven't upon. even got into any of that, but I don't even know. If no, but like, here's, on. here's the thing. Like I definitely want to have you on again. No, I'm not saying we're going to end now. I'm just right. saying like, yeah, no, totally. because like, because like the story, I always think the story part is cool, but then like, you it, know, you got to next point. time if you're down, we can just like kind of just like spitball, yeah. and then sometimes we get spitball's some... nice because the story, you know. Well, it's... we can stop. We can just keep spitballing. We keep talking about issues. I love that shit. Like, well, I, I'm like I'm all about. Like, I mean, the, proactive, the, the, the like... podcast is called Learning to Lose, mm-hmm. and I, I yeah always just like to try to bring it back to that. And mm-hmm. I think you've experienced so much loss, and it's not just loss. So like... much loss, but so see, it's I'm I'm learn like if I. For a long time, I really dug oh, losing. God. Like, oh, we really? dig losing because there's there's a fucking victim role that I just sat oh. right in. Oh, I can relate to yeah. that, yeah. I am queen victim. Like the smashing, there's a lot. smashing pumpkin yeah, song. Totally. I'm in love with my sadness. I'm yeah, really... there's, uh, it's my identity. It's my war, my, it's my war badge. It's also, my... have you ever seen the, the movie Swingers? Oh, you want to hear a great story? I'm going to tell you the funniest story. Do you know the movie, though? Dude, I know the movie. Have you seen it? Yeah. Sorry, before you tell the story, I just want to tell them. There's a part in the in the movie where he loses his girlfriend. Or, yeah, his wife. So, no, it's his girlfriend, his oh, long-term girlfriend. Yeah, and, 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 and the guy comes, you know, he goes, you know, he's telling him his experience. And he's like, you know, eventually <laughs> you, 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 you miss the sadness. Mm-hmm. He's like, first you wake up. He's explaining the... The cycle of like losing the girl, and then after a while, you're like, "Hmm, I'm not really sad anymore, but like, I miss being that. sad." Like, yeah, I don't have a purpose. I, I was had a purpose like to be sad. Sharing that. So it's here's so a profound. great. Here's a funny story, you guys. So I'm a script supervisor. I've been a script supervisor for 30 years, uh-huh. and just in the last couple of years, I've decided to go back into acting, and I've done tons of commercials, and I've done really. Yeah, yeah, I've got. Can you find any on YouTube? Oh, yeah. Um, really? Yeah. If you go to HillaryPowers.com, I have a website and I've got a couple commercials and my reels up there, my acting reels. But anyway, so I'm working on this movie called, uh, oh, shit, I'm having it any timers. It's with uh, John Favreau and... Maid? No, it's... Chef? So it's, no, uh, it's about they hit, they cut up a... Um, it's a movie I worked on. I cut up a, a stripper. Oh, God. Uh, I'm going to have to look up. IMDb. I think we can definitely get you a better picture, Hillary. What, what do you mean? 
Oh, I know, but that's without you, makeup. But that's, you look so much better in real life. But that's that's a, just a picture without makeup. So this is like so. perfect. Whatever. This is what you want. This picture. Well, it's keep scrolling up. You'll see a whole bunch. Because we live with a really amazing photographer. But um, oh, really? I'll take one. I'll do it. Yeah, here. Yeah, he's epic. No, I did that one of those. Okay, so I'm working on this movie, and um. John Wait, Favreau's in it. Up people? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show it. The... Commercial. No. Hold yeah, on. yeah, please. Does anybody want one? Script supervisor here. No. no, let me see here. Oh my God, this is amazing. It's not Surfer Dude. Let me see. Insure. Yeah, that's my Insure commercial. That's I another used to funny story. I take down Insure all the time. I bet you did. Just for, like, you know, to, to take the pills. Ew, gross. Really? For real? No, like, because my stomach is empty. I'm not <gasps> able to eat. So oh, all awesome. I can do is drink Insure because I need to have some kind of. I get it. I have this issue with my stomach where I have, like, I'm even feeling it right now, which is why I had her make me some protein pancakes. Oh, okay. So the movie was called Very Bad Things. Mm, I never saw it. You'll like it. It's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. um, Christian Slater's in it. Daniel Stern, Cameron Diaz, John Favreau, hmm. uh, Leland Orstrom, um, Jeremy Piven's in it. Gene mm -hmm. Triplehorn. Great cast. I'm working on this movie, and um, John Favreau had just done Swingers, and I was just going through my divorce from my second husband. Uh huh who had cheated on me the whole time during the marriage. Mm -hmm. And I mean, tell me you like talk to John Favreau. Oh, I work with him. Yeah. That's so crazy. He's a great guy, but this is, he never spoke to me after this. I mean, he's like a so, fucking hero. So I said to him, he says, have you seen swingers? And I'm he like, he said that to yeah. you. And I hadn't seen it at the time uh -huh. and I didn't see it. So I didn't know he was in it. I, I I knew he was in it, but I I said, you know what, John? I I just I never I didn't see it. He goes, you haven't saw it. You need to see it. It's such a great movie. And I'm like, dude, I don't really want to see it. I mean, it's like not. I'm going through a divorce. I don't know. It's just not my it's not my thing. And he goes, oh man, I can't believe it. And I said, John, it's not like you wrote it or anything. You said that. <laughs> I said that. And, and he, he looked at me and he goes, I did write it. He didn't speak to me the rest of the movie, and I tried to get on his movies as a script supervisor. He just probably threw my resume but, but, away. But, but now you talk to him? or No, or you just, the... you know, egos get hurt. It was so like, it had What no... a weird, who cares? <laughs> I did it write it, funny. actually. I, I know, but I think his ego was hurt. That's the fragile ego of an artist. I get it. Yeah. So, so, like, so he, he, was he, a, he was fun. I had lots of fun on that movie. Fucking, he did Iron Man. He's he's genius. He's so, but no, so but the first, amazing. The first Iron Man. I think I tried to get on Iron Man. The first Iron <laughs> Man is what spawned this whole Marvel franchise. Yeah, mm. Spawn did. It, it, Spawn. It, it, I worked on Spawn. Well, Spawn that was, was a, the first one that was Mike Mark, Mark De, De Pe, De Pectre or Yeah, but oh, that, really, you were in that. I worked on. No, yeah, I worked on. I wasn't in it. No. Spawn and and the Crow and 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 yeah. Blade. And those yeah. are all cool comic book movies. Yeah. But I'm saying those are yeah. that's not. Iron Man was like crazy. no. Iron Man was the first movie because all the Marvel movies have Tony Stark. There, there's a, it's a specific cast of characters that, that that's where it came from, mm -hmm. and there was ten, and they were Do all the highest grossing films of all time. Do you think of all time? And there, it's just insane. It's this guy is a fucking. Mm -hmm. And then he did the new Lion King, which is fucking amazing. The new oh, Jungle Book. That. What guy? Who was Chef, talking about? Uh, John, John Favreau. Favreau. He's, he's just a fucking he's incredible. So incredibly, he's not, he's an art. He's a savant when it comes to art. Yeah, mm. this guy. So, um, do you feel or think I should say? Looks familiar. Do you think Does he act that? Too? Yeah. yeah. Do you think that? All these superheroes, they're pretty dark now, aren't they? Well, I mean, they're just like human. But don't you think they've gone darker and darker and darker, these superheroes? Definitely Batman like, with uh, Christopher Nolan. It's shit. like dark. Everything is really dark. Like there's such a dark energy to these movies. Like there's nothing 
Well, have you? Well, first of all, you, you, have you seen like all the Marvel films? I can't watch it. They're too. They've gotten too dark for me. Really? Mm-hmm. Like which one? I just don't. I don't have any desire to watch them. Okay, it's, that's different from you no, having watched like, one and I've noticed. watched Dark Man all the way down to yeah, Iron that's, Man and to yeah, but the first Iron Man. I think the first Iron Man, but then I think it, I know what you're saying. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> it's dark shit. Yeah, it's well, it's dark it, Sith. Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Sith shit. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely yeah. not like you there's know, a great documentary. Hold on, though. It's definitely not like Batman and Robin and the way that was when it was a TV show in the '70s. It's no. not that. That was no. like a joke. It's so much more like there's a lot of depth to these films. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of depth to them. There's like character flaws and 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 struggles with teamwork and and yeah, like fucking. Um, but sometimes we don't always want these dark. Like, there's sometimes simplicity is really kind of light. Yeah, yeah. that's what the, it's. It's the supply and demand. I think that's what people I want, know, right? So, but look at our world so dark too. It's well, like that's what he's saying. I know. It's just you know, is it the chicken or the egg? I mean, Hollywood controls a lot of people's personality. Well, what's the last light, feel good movie that we've seen that? I can't even remember. I saw this one. That's dark probably too, though. No, there's a, there's a bunch, dude. I just saw a great... I've seen a bunch of great... Like, like what was the last one that I saw? It was just like a great... Oh, like, dude, Danny Boyle just made one about, I the, love about Danny the Beatles. Boyle. Like, it, what if there was... Oh, that was so beautiful. You saw it? Yes. What a, just like a so great film. So happy. So this guy... He it, made you happy. You're yeah. happy. It, it, it's like... This 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 kid, this musician. Uh, also, there was one on uh, Bruce Springsteen. Really, I didn't see. Well, that well one. it's I not. Didn't... It's a. It's a kid's journey to meet. I'd his love hero. to work with Danny Boyle. That would be. Oh awesome. my god, he's such. Oh. He's actually. I want to be an actor in all these movies because I've worked on some ma- big film. I've worked with some tons of directors. Well, well, and can, I tend well, to. Fi- can, I've okay. fought with a couple of the ego ones okay, because I'm so like I don't put up with shit. We're gonna do. A short film together okay. here for learning to lose. I have a YouTube channel, okay, and 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 and, and we do short films. Um, can I be a bad guy? You are. I think a bad you can. Guy. I will, I'm a good bad guy. I am a sinister, bad guy. Sinister. You can do sinister. Oh yeah, for sure. Second. No, it's really fun. Like we we like this is the last one that we just posted. This is me. Um, I can help you produce it. I can help you like put it together. I can help you with the art stuff. I yeah. can be in it. What can you like do? this is one that we just did, um, and I had my friends score it. We see it and everything. Which one are you showing her? She's watching the one. Uh, or wait, hold on a second. Let's Is that the one? Yeah. What up? Okay. Could you ever do the one you were doing, Hillary? Did you no, do No, it? it fell apart because uh, oh. pandemic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Getting ready to do it. We had it all set up. We were getting, we had two weeks to go and it pulled the plug. I'm actually not super happy with this, you but you can just see. Is that the I one think. where you get. Oh, you, you put it up to the speaker? Hold, guys. The speaker. Oh, I saw this. You sent oh, this you to did? me. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, it's chill. But yeah. I think the next one we do will be a lot better. Here, you don't need to watch I thought that. you yeah, were good Yeah, it was good. It. I thought it was good. I thought you were good. Uh, I thought it was good. Even though you don't think but so. But, like, yeah, like, that's a nice shot. Right. Like, it, yeah, looks, good. it looks pretty good. You Didn't know? look bad. The sound is good. And yeah, I don't, I don't, you did to me, um... The blue light, I'm not taking that. Yeah, it, I didn't it's direct too, it. It's too, yeah. I didn't direct it. It's too um, contrived. Yeah. Wow, that's rad. I love it. I, I actually, I, I love that. Well, then there's this I'm one too. A record by this group called Love. But where I, I, I love that band, by like the way. One of the love. Yeah. Of that, of, uh, one of the greatest rock albums ever. At least the one and album. The singer is black too. He actually what was got this accused one? of murder. Uh, but, but, but before that. Dude, your hair is like gone. Who's this dude? Troy. Oh god, yeah. Okay, I thought it was. The phone, it sounds almost like muffled on the phone and like like there's too much like low end and there's not enough like Oh, I like this is. This one's really cool. We're kind of just improving. Mhm. So I, I own the red. Right? 
This was really intense. It's like weird. I got some people saying. Oh, oh, you remember this? Yes, because I remember somebody saying. Fuck. Did, did Pat relapse? Pat relapsed, yeah. and I said, "No, it's a movie." Yeah, oh it's a God. short film about oh learning my, to lose. Right, I know. So Someone like, told me that you relapsed, and I so said, "No, we, I don't." So we think should do. We should do one. Um, I don't know. Like maybe think about it uh, because we can just have fun with like the story and and maybe Billy can be like, yeah, I don't yeah, know like guy, island, black island. No, it, you're you're a great <laughs> version of yourself. Like, don't try to be anybody. Just, like like you, hold you on, just be yourself in the circle. What if what if Billy? What I mean, this might be too close to home, but I just love doing things that are like real. Because then we don't really need to act. Fiction. Play. Well, you just play yourself so, in no, the circumstance. But, yeah, like what if you're like really fucked up because of what you're going through? And and, and Hillary can be someone that's helping you get through it. I mean, you're sure, talking. I'll, I'll do whatever. Well, I mean, you're. You I just, don't even know if I can, but I'll do no, it. No, no, no. You just you talk just... about the pain of losing the mother of your child and and having. Had uh, and, and how I'm gonna murder her, her husband, her new husband, and I don't know. May, I won't it, kill him. It, it I'll just, just take his eyes. Depends on how far you want to take it. Depends because, what what way you want to go. But, but here's the show. thing, though, because when you film something like that really well, and you add music to it, and she helps you see the light and take you out of that place. Oh, well, that's what we do anyway, right? We do that on the phone all <laughs> yeah. the time. We're like always talking on the that's phone. That's why it's so great. Right. We don't need to like. Right uh, or act, we just need to present. So present, could, play yourself in the circumstance. That's, that's it. it. That's and, called. And, that's and, how you're supposed to act, anyway. And, just and, be and, you. And, and the, the cool thing about it is, it's in line with this whole. Well, solution oriented and learning and, to lose. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's beautiful. And then learning, you have a yeah. small little piece of content, five to ten minutes that you could send to someone, and it's it looks great. It's entertaining, and you're like, wow, like. And they, maybe you could take this concept. Are they acting or and go what, what is week this? to week a certain scenario? So 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 maybe like next week or like the week after that we can like you can do, act out learning to lose. It could be a series. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Every that's week you have said. a different. That's what I'm trying to do. You have do. a different circumstance. Yeah. You have yeah. to bring a different person in. Like we totally solution oriented though. Dude, He's what we a should, brain fart. We sh- what we should do is just <laughs> film it before we do the podcast or after. Of course, that's how you do it. That way you have like you a have little, content. you have like a little trailer right. for the podcast. So whatever we talk about, we well, can just shoot afterwards. Dude, perfect. Well, you can't do that for every podcast. No, we can't. No, but you have lot. to do it to but, introduce it so you can get people peak. But their honestly, like like that. this one, this one with with Dan, with me and Troy, that was heavy. Yeah, it was, <laughs> but it wasn't really that hard to do because you're because just playing yourself just, in a circumstance. All we needed was two cameras, right? So I had someone filming me and I had someone filming him. So we didn't need to like redo anything. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So as long as we have two quality cameras with quality right, lenses right. on each person and good labs on each person, mm-hmm. um, as long as each shot looks pretty good, you can, and then you add music to it and, 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 and you don't let the improv go too far off track. I think it would be crazy because you start getting into this character that you are, which is like, you're starting to present to him like what he's struggling with Angela and you're, and maybe you can change her name or whatever for yeah, the sake of, for the sake of it. And then you're telling him what, what are you struggling with? Well, he's, his, you know, he's doesn't know if he wants to stay sober because he's losing his, what is I have a bag. So- of, I have a bag of Valium at home and I, and I have, the person who gave it, to, anyway, we don't want to go too far into that, but she's, she's like, don't, she wrote right on the bag, don't abuse this. This is what we do. We <laughs> abuse this. Really? Things. Who gave that to you? I'm not going to know. I, yes. Yes. We all know, but I'm not going to say anything. Can you fucking believe that shit? And I'm being but, crucified because I wanted to like try dude, I, CBD at my house. Cause I was like, I thought I felt something because, um, someone that I trust gave this to me and said, here, this is good for inflammation. The it hus- is great for inflammation. You know, we should, Hold cut, on. we should cut this out now. Cause I tell you, I am so loyal to this person and she has been so beneficial in my life. And I mean, it's she's just got a some whole shit. She's got some shit on me to too, and yeah. so 
Yeah, yeah. well, okay. I just fuck. Yeah, I fucked up. Well, we yeah. haven't said anything. It's fine. Okay. No, nobody knows who we're talking about. Anyhow, well, anyhow, do, anyhow, anyhow. So we could choose a situation. Yeah, you're the one who went there. I, I'm just, I, we all can I choose. Do is I know. I fucked up. Did I just say I fucked okay, up? Okay, cool. I no, just, stop. As... See, this is what we're going to do. Why did you? You didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. You were just in a train of thought. Yeah. There's no fucking up. But, really. but, 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 but there's no fucking up. You didn't do anything wrong, honey. Don't go there. Because that's when you get back into, I'm a fuck up. Mm-hmm. I'm not good enough. No, I, I, I'm bad. Don't go there, Well, Billy. thank God nobody Come that back. listens, well, let listen to this anyway that knows anybody. They have anybody. no idea. But, like, here's the thing is, like, you're in pain for whatever reason. You can talk about um, the mother of your child losing interest in you. I don't know. Is that interesting? Is that, no, is that well, fun to do? Well, you know what the weird thing is, is... Most men don't talk about can, can you just let child. me can you let me direct Do you it? know that most women it's more women thinking oh my god I'm gonna lose my children like we don't really see. you know back in the day did you know that back in the day when divorces first started that men usually got the children Wow. Because they're the breadwinners. What? I don't know. When was this? 1800s or something? It was when way back in the 30s. Hmm. And then it shifted around. The mother was able to take care of them. Yeah. Well, Angela, she lost her daddy, and she never really had her daddy, and she feels it's very important for Summer to have her biological father. And That's she, great. I don't think she'll ever... That's great. Then you it know, is Summer is really going to turn out a really whole... But, you know, the beginning, her first five years were... She wasn't fragmented or fractured, or she didn't have the stuff we that we all had. We all lived in a box had. as big as this living room. Which is fine. Which is not bad. Well, I like, mean, what I'm saying is we were so close all the time. There's love. There there's was a lot of love, consistency. I'm sure. There was, you always know mommy and daddy You're were always right going to fuck your kids up, though. You know? Dude, it's the ride. <laughs> it's the ride. It's the ride. It'd be kind of, it would be ashamed if you didn't fuck them up. I don't think it's possible not to. Because you know what? If you don't get fucked up, you have nothing to work on throughout but this whole I, I, I'm lifetime. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm having like a really. I'm so lucky. I had so much shit to work through. It's so awesome because it's given <laughs> it's me so... such a huge personality. Yeah. It's given me, you know, I was saying all the exactly. shit that happened with my mom. It's like, I fucking am so happy yeah. I had my mother. Yeah. She made me so resilient. She made me a hard fucking worker. I have work ethics like there's no tomorrow. I don't stop. I just keep going. You know, I don't put up with shit. If I got, if I got knocked down, let me tell you, I go back up and I don't care. Like she really helped me. She gave me my personality. She gave me my look. She gave me my sense of humor. She gave me my wit. She gave me my brain. Bam. Did I score? So I had to put up with a bunch of bullshit. That I'm able to weed out yeah, through well, AA. you're seeing the good stuff. I get to weed all that stuff out in AA. I get to discover and discard. How do, you, how do you feel about her, though? Just like for real? For real? You know what? I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, neither would I. I love about my mother. My life. When my mom died. Or else we wouldn't be doing this right now. When my mom like, You did. wouldn't have anything no, to offer. I would You're either. helping so many people. Yeah, and totally. There's an attraction when my to mom your died, wisdom and your experience and all that stuff. I found out my mom died through a phone call. The Venice Police Department said, Hey, I think your mother's dead. She had gone to Palm Springs or no 29 Palms because she wanted to go go to where the where the Marines were because she thought they would save her. I mean, she was delusional at this point, and she ended up dying. She told the people in the hospital that she had no siblings and no children and no family because of the shame of alcoholism. You get so shameful for being a fuck up. We all know that. Yeah. Shame. So you just have so so. He, I think what his question is is like, what are your feelings towards her? So when my mother died, I was so angry that I didn't have a chance to make peace with her. Yeah. Mm. So finally, my sponsor said to me, "A sponsor is someone that helps you go through the steps and helps you in the Somebody day." Somebody asked you me that today. So they said, "What is a sponsor?" I was so. It's someone who helps you go through the steps. I was just step. so excited like I could actually answer that question. Who who who, ha- who guides yeah. you? It's somebody who's been through certain things and. Who's able to give you a spiritual perception of it. Sort of like a mentor of sorts. Yeah, a mentor, but in AA. So my sponsor said to me, 
you are never going to be able to have love in your life and you're never be able to succeed until you forgive your mom. And I thought, fuck this. I don't want to forgive my mom because see, I was living still on the victim role. My pain, I would tell people about my story. They hey, feel yeah. sorry for me. Oh my God, that's so sad. So I was getting mileage out of it. Yeah. I'd get free meals. I'd get hugs. I'd get, oh, poor girl. Mm. What can I do? Can I give you some clothes? Like I was working the system, mm. but it wasn't working anymore. It's yeah, it's like, funny. I had just been reading that in Sermon on the Mount at the end of the Lord's Prayer near the end of the book. Yeah. Then it just emphasizes forgiveness one and all is just key for freedom, for your own freedom. Oh, my God. And I thought, I can't forgive her because, no, she's going to win. And it's like forgiveness makes you win. It does. So my sponsor had me write on an inventory of everything that my mother did to me. And this was a different format than all the stuff that my mother did to me. And then everything I did in retaliation to her. So I got to look at, I was no different than she was. I saw that with my stepmom. She was the evil. Well, she was your mom. She was my stepmom. And then I realized I am her. She is me. And it was like, what the fuck? And then I had to look at my mother probably wouldn't have done these things if she didn't suffer from mental illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If she didn't suffer from alcohol addiction so pat this is a really cool story about my mom you talking keep talking sure yeah i mean it's recording yeah so anyway so gary my friend gary said you really got to write this inventory so I wrote this inventory and I wrote down all the things like when my mom didn't take me to the doctor, when I got a broken arm, I broke her arm, like I was trying to pay back, like I was trying. And I remember when I broke her arm, I thought I could break every single bone in her body and it wouldn't take away the rage I had for this woman. Like I was so sick. Stuck in anger. No, I know the rage. Yeah, I would think of sinking an axe into this woman's head yeah. and watching her bleed. Her people, her people. Well, it's pain and sadness. Wait, creep. me? Yeah, he says the no, well, dude, I, I, no, but this I is get true. It. I, I, I would, it. I would vision this. I would I envision it. this. It's you don't know what to do with this hurt and pain. It makes no sense. Like you don't know how to process it. It's too scary <laughs> to process it. Oh, no, I'm starting to feel like a psycho. But it, you No, know, don't, because people, you're just talking about it. You know what? Yeah, no, I don't give everybody, a shit. Actually, everybody you know has these fuck. thoughts. Think we whatever we you want. We fucking think these shit. We think oh, this what? shit. We think about driving our car off the cliff. What oh, the fuck's yeah. the difference? I used to have trouble driving on the freeway because I had this urge to jet the wheel like this, and I, I would be afraid that I might do it. And this was for you. A long time. And then yelling at people in this, on driving on the freeway, you just think, what if I came out and fucking beat the shit out of them? And I'm uh, such a girl, but it's like, yeah, right. Yeah. Hurt, you know. I've seen my dad do that. Yeah, my dad's done Get that out of the car and like, yeah. Ah, yeah. He didn't actually fight because the guy wouldn't get out of the car, but he... he... <laughs> oh my God, your dad was scary. But I, I but so anyways, I wrote this inventory and it was probably, I don't know, five pages. And I wrote down everything I did in retaliation to my mother and what character I was. Like, I was no different than her. So, so crazy, right, when you realize so that? So I had, when my mom had died, I took my mom's ashes, and I was living on San Vicente near the beach in Second. And I took my mom's ashes, and I put them in the beach right down the street. I used to laugh and go, ha oh, you got to keep your enemies close. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I put her ashes in the ocean, and I put my brother's, a- my dad's ashes there, and I'm like, yeah, we're going to make them back together again. Hmm. And so when you go down West Channel Road in Santa Monica, in order for you to get to the beach, you have to go underneath Pacific Coast Highway. There's a tunnel. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm a script supervisor, and what I do for a living is, is I watch continuity, and I really take... You are? I, th- I thought you were an actor. I do. I also have done that, but now I am an actor. But I've done continuity. I have to keep it up for my insurance. Oh. So I take my backpack with this inventory, and I 
I'm going, okay, I'm going to go read the inventory to my mom. And I'm, so I'm like, I read her all the stuff that she did. And then I read all the stuff that I had done. And I said to my mom, when I'm down there, remember I had gone underneath the PCH uh-huh. through the tunnel and I sat there for like an hour and a half and sat I, where on the beach where oh. my mom, I had put my uh, mom's okay, ashes okay. and I told my mom, I said, you know, mom, I know that you would have never done that. I know that no mother wants to beat her child. Yeah. I know that no mother wants to humiliate her and call her names and and use her and take her money. I know you wouldn't do those things unless you had a mental illness. Yeah. There's something wrong and or you suffered from alcoholism and I understand that because I too have it. Yes. I get why I did the things I did too. Yeah. So I made this like there was such a connection between her and I. And I think for anger and non forgiveness creates a huge separation between you, you and two. Like you're cutting off the connection, the God connection. Yeah, for sure. So I sat there and I cried and I said I was really sorry for my behavior. I sorry that every time my mother would cry about me and I, I'd run away from home. She would, I'd call up from some payphone and she'd say, oh my God, where are you? I've called every police department. And I would say, mom, if you start yelling at me, I'm going to hang the phone up. And then she'd start screaming and I'd hang the phone up because I knew it would make her hurt so bad. And I wanted to hurt her because she hurt me so much. Yeah, I know. And I made her amends her and I said, I know mom that I'm so sorry for being that person that you hated the most. I'm so sorry for doing this. And there was a sense of lifting of like all of a sudden I connected with my mom and the forgiveness had taken place and I sat there for about an hour and a half after I'd read this inventory and I said okay mom you know what I love you thank you for making me who I am you've given me strength you made me gave me my looks my charm my wit my and I named all the things that my mom had done for me and then I walked back underneath the freeway, and in the time that I had writ- I had done my amends to my mother on the beach, someone had written in gold spray paint on the side of the wall underneath PCH, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. Mm. Like even when you're like it, 30 it, or 40. And let me just comment on that. That's how this stuff changes the past. This is the Because the past thing. changes for you. And all of a sudden, it was like, who did that? Like that was a god shot. And good? my perception is, you want to just... I had a perfect childhood. It was perfect. Okay. It was exactly what I needed. Like, I start seeing so, the good I, in my childhood. I, 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 I just want to kind of like bookmark this real quick for Kaya, who's going to be editing this. Because I want this to be the Instagram. We, we try to pick a minute, which is hard because it's already been two hours. But I, I, I think that recovery and AA and um, this, this kind of work, it mm-hmm. actually has the power to not only change you like right now, but it, it, it can change your past, which is so sounds so crazy. I want you to put this in the Instagram video and you were saying, because your perception of the past changes, you're grateful now for all this bad, so seemingly, g- seemingly bad. bad stuff. Yeah. But not only that, you get then you're free to see the good stuff that happened too. Like, it like just your, changes. Like your... Hillary had such a horrific upbringing, but it made her this beautiful person she is today. And and but I couldn't get to this place until I looked at my behavior as a result of the behavior that was done to me, like who I became. Like I was no different than my mother. Yeah, yeah. I acted out just like my mother. I know what you mean. Yeah, me too. I became my stepfather. I was Mm -hmm. the drug dealer that I hated the most. Like I had to look at, my mother didn't set out and said, I'm going to have a child. I'm going to abuse her. I am going to take everything from her. I'm going to send her away, send her to a foster home, make her eat out of trash cans, make her sell pots and pans on the side of the highway, make her sell her fucking vagina in my 20s. Like she didn't say, I'm going to do that. But as a result of where I came from, it created this person. And I had to forgive her for doing Forgive her for she does not know. What she's doing. My mother was And sick. then like have I had empathy. to have 
See, I can't have empathy towards Hillary until I have empathy towards her. Yeah. Forgiveness is so key. It's I, so important. In the back of the Sermon on the Mount, it really talks about it. And I was just reading it in my morning meditations, and a list of people and institutions just came to me, and I wrote them down right in the book. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I, sorry, I just want, want to just let her know. This can be longer than a minute. I want you to put this whole thing in there because... Um, Fuck, I had it. Fuck. Oh, oh, okay. So <laughs> I was watching Gary V was talking about Charlie uh, D- D- D'Amato. She's like the biggest TikToker in the world. And she's like, how do I... I just got 4 million followers in the past month. She already has 20 right. million. She's a kid. Right. And she's just getting so much hate. And Gary V said what I always think when I get hate. I think... I just have empathy for these people. I just am like, oh man, like how sad someone's in their room watching my videos. Well, and like, it's hold, sad hold on, is hold, my, hold, hold yeah. on, let me finish. Sorry. How sad is it someone's in their room watching my videos or her videos and they have the time, they're so in so much pain, they have the time to, you fucking piece of shit, or that's all you know how to do. You're only gonna be famous from this one. It's like, oh man, that's so sad. I feel so bad for that person. Like, if you have empathy for your mom and what she's. My mother was in so tortured. That she, too. she tortured pain. lots of pain. You know, everything comes from the inside. Over, everything know? comes from the inside. That you know, I always say that that when I was getting loaded, my 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 funnel was on backwards. I kept thinking that the world was showing me who I was, but in the in actually, what was happening is I was showing the world who I was. Right. So all of this stuff kept happening that was wrong. And the minute I made that, literally, I made that amends. And I saw that it's never too late to have a happy childhood. What that was written on the wall. I started making from thirty thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars in one year. Because you stopped. Because I no. Because I started believing that why not me? Mm -hmm. That I'm allowed to have this. I'm not this bad human being. Because unforgiveness and anger and resentment keeps you down yeah that's why i feel kind of bad for for our boy with hi husband <laughs> yeah i i feel bad for people that are mad at me you know still no nope. let me just ask a quick through all that chaos she was uh, that was a good story it, it still happened right it got recorded and, and yeah everything. but i didn't get it on video i only got that last bit on video but I have it. It's all on the podcast. It's going to be in the podcast for sure. Because I thought that was a, that was good because it really touched me too. Because I had I'm really sorry. I'm having similar experiences. I'm, I'm really sorry that I had to run around. But like right now, it's hard to find help. Dude, usually, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I it's usually, okay. That's true. Yeah, I it's know. Okay. I know it is because it's all I'm. Good. I know it is because I'm crushing this shit and I'm doing it by myself. <laughs> and like, I usually have a guy that helps me like with the camera and like you know. Because it's hard to be like hosting a podcast. Dude, it's Alex? hard to be everything. I know. Okay. I have the biggest problem being everything. <laughs> but I fucking love that we're talking about this shit. Yeah, it's, you know, and there, I have to, you have to really like, you know, when I'm angry at somebody, there's a part of me that's jealous that I'm not where they're at. For sure. For sure. You, you, to see that, even to see that was a big deal. You know? Yeah, like, like I want to be there. There's a part of me, even though I don't want to be there, you don't I want to be, be there. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? It's like okay, when, you, when you're, okay, here's this TikTok girl, the oh, 20 million. Oh. These people are angry at her because right. there's a part of them, they want to be there. Like they want to be recognized. And they think they that somewhere in their, be. it's not that they deserve. There's a part of them that they feel as if when they get over there, it's the bouncing ball technique. When I get over there, man, I'm going to be somebody and then I'm going to feel good about myself. It's that funnel on backwards, seeing the outside world. When I'm a star, I'll be okay. Dude, you're not going to be okay until you're okay. Yeah. Well, and that, yeah. that even if like this little girl doesn't even know that she's become so famous, because that's not her goal is to become famous. It's just happening. She's just enjoying in the day that she's in. She's just being happy. Charlie D- Dumata. Do you yeah. know who that is? No, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's fucking it's a name. insane. But this person. She's this child, this kid. I don't, she's I, not I, doing it to get famous. She's just enjoying what she's doing in the I, day I, I, she's in. Although you don't know who she is, yeah. I actually think you're right. Because she's a 
you could tell she's having fun, like dancing with her friends and stuff. She's just being who she is in the day and, she's in. And when someone else sees it and sees it, they're getting all the acclimates and getting all the attention that they're probably fucking not getting at home. They're not getting it from their mother. They're not getting it from their father. They're not getting it from their You mean the people friends. that are hating? Yeah. Right. Well, so there's some sense it, of emptiness yeah. that they think when they get over there. Well, you know what it says, too, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount is those that have will be given more and those that have not will be taken what away, more taken away. You know that principle? What is it? Those that have will be given more and those that do not have more shall be taken. Do you know that one? Yeah. But it's because of the thought process. 100%. It's because of your mentality and the yeah. way you think. Yeah. You're you reading think, that book. That's why I say to you, you Billy... That's why I say we have had this conversation. Well, that's why it, the changing, that's why it's a that's mind power why disease. I say to you, don't write it, I want, because that's the lack. I have. I have it. I have. I have I'm, an amazing I'm, try, I'm house. doing that. I have amazing life. But, I have amazing partner. And, I have an amazing day. Oh my God, I'm so beautiful. And you know I'm what? so smart. I'm, that's why we actually claim it. That's yeah. what God says. Claim the desires. And you know what? It's Claim slowly it. working because look where I'm sitting doing a podcast. Like, how did I ever get here? Netflix. Claim it. S- sorry, what were you saying, Billy? Well, it is happening because look who I am, where I'm at. This Dude, is great. Yeah. Ent- I never anticipated anything like this. Yeah. And and let me tell you a secret. Hmm. It's not a secret, but that's just a figure. Of speech. And even wait a minute. Like, I have it, it, Okay. Why is this happening? Because you two made a commitment to work things out and forgive what happened. Oh, the CBD incident? That's what I'm talking about. I was in so much fear. That was a hard And core. you were able to say, wow, I made a mistake. And he was able to say, I love you, dude. I forgive you. I'm not holding you up to I the... Hope. Do you see? Yeah, you know what that I, saying did I not is. Say that? Yeah, you I know, get but that? I'm still so insecure but, and afraid. Do you that remember? I'm like, you know that saying. I'm not holding you up to the cross. I mean, I'm not fucking killing you over this. No crucifying. No. Yeah. No, but that's the beauty and forgiveness. Like your whole world opens up when you guys when you guys work things out and you forgive. Like you got to forgive yourself for this, babe. Yeah. This no. is your work. Yeah. No, I have, and, and it happens with Oleg all the time, and Veronica, and I believe it brings us closer. Yeah, I if mean, you work it out, yeah. If because, you work it out, if you're willing to say I was wrong, and it was like the first real, like, yeah, butting heads kind of moment that we had, and it was like I was so scared because I know Billy's character, or I know I think I know what his old character was just based on some of the shares you've had, and I kept mm-hmm. envisioning this one share of him saying, "When I get angry at people, I just." get quiet and I just like ignore them and I just shut them out. That's how he, Yeah, and I was so that's scared. His shielding. I was so scared that, that he was going to do that to me. And it's funny because like I, he doesn't really like, wh- but isn't it nice that you found out how much you value him in your life? Uh, yeah. And, and it's not because of any kind of like, like social status or like well, that's my, I don't have many. right and 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 the fact but there is such a difference between each other that of oh, course for sure. and, and and that's why I value him so much because he brings this kind of like down to earth authentic like thing to what I'm trying to do and it's uh it's pure and and the value I have for it is coming from a pure place. It's not coming from this like, oh, I want to get Bella Thorne on the podcast so it'll get a bunch of views. It's like me doing something for the right reason mm. so that it will touch less people but more mm. profoundly. But you were trying Does that make to, sense? Yeah, but at that time, I, I mean, this is just my perception. I could be totally wrong, but this is if you want my... I do. Sometimes we try to force solutions. We try to get somewhere really quick. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> And I think oh, that that, that may you try to force to get to where you think you needed to get. And as a result, you thought it's cool. I can use him because he's a cool dude and not even thinking of the repercussions of it. And as a result of that, your ego got fractured, which is a good thing because it was getting bigger because <clears throat> you were forcing when you were forcing it, you're an ego. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, like my friendship between him means more than mm. what I was doing. Like my insides are more important than what's going to be happening on the outside. That was a great thing. Mm-hmm. And his 
his learning was he forgave you. That's a fucking huge thing. Mm-hmm. For and what? Well, I had for, to forgive Astrid too. Well, and he forgave you and said, "Dude, you know what? But, we all do. We all do stuff." But what did he forgive me for? For for for, for dosing me on, on social for, media and for for no. Well, but see, here's what, I don't know. I don't no, know, but I know he did forgive you because he here's, did. But here's here's where it gets tricky. Okay. If somebody says, "Yeah, I'll, I'll try. I'll do that," right, and they're. A grown man, but and, and then and then you film them, and they're and they know what you're doing, and they know what you but, do. But when you're trying to get something, which is I'm getting it, I'm getting an audience. Wait okay, a minute, but did I'm you? Not. Th- but wait a minute, but did you think it through and thought, yeah. how is this gonna? What are the repercussions of this? That's what yeah. happens when we get into driven self ego stuff. We don't look at the end; we just want to get there. Well, but you have to understand like, but that's what I'm saying. But uh, look, don't justify because I'm then, just going to tell you the truth, but there's a whole lot of gray here, right? It's not but black and white. It's but, not black and white. But I'm saying is like, there is a part of you, you need to like forgive yourself because you're still shaming yourself over it. That's well, what I'm trying to get. Well, to. no, well, but just let me just say this. First of all, that my intention that whole time before that even happened to him and, 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 and during and after was, was only for people to see the actual effects of this CBD thing. Right. But that's, you- that's was my intention. It wasn't to like, I, I knew that wasn't going to like be, I it wasn't because I thought it was going to get pop. If I wanted to be popular, I would do like sexy shit with Veronica and this, my second wife, Sarah. Like sh- that's the shit that people, this is not this, our stuff has never been like a way for me to get more. It's only a way for me to like, to, 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 to promote truth in and recovery to right. people who really need it. It's right. not to like expose or to promote or to like, it's only to find truth in but the CBD I thing. Don't, I didn't think through the repercussions. That's what I'm You're saying. You're absolutely right. That's what You're happened. Right. And, 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 but, and because of that, nothing is bad. But, but nothing is bad. It wasn't a bad thing. Because what happened is you were given a depth of friendship that you didn't even know existed. That you came down off your high of trying to show the world. And thought, wow, dude, I, I don't want to hurt my brother. Yeah. I like, I am connected to this man. And I called Angela. Oh, you are connected and, and to I, these people. Like, there yeah. is a God, invisible God thread that's connected to everybody. And when we're in, we're in like, driven, we don't feel that connection. And, and Billy was given the opportunity to forgive and talk about it. This is a dude who shuts down. And he was and, given an opportunity to open. Yeah, and I had my part too. It was poor judgment. I didn't think it was going to do anything. And he had been saying it's doing something, but I didn't. Yes. I didn't understand like it was getting him high. I, I just thought he was feeling whatever CBD is supposed to do. That's so I, what I thought. I too, wasn't clear. Which is so crazy. Wasn't right. clear. But but I think you guys both went in it to it with your eyes shut. Well, well, but but you also don't know. Maybe you forgot, or you don't know that the week before that, he took it also. Right. That wasn't the first time. Right. And he didn't feel anything. But I think what happened is you started, you you realized how important this guy is to you. That's the real underlying. Yeah, well, I saw that. I saw that. You he, was, saw he was freaked out. He was freaked out. And, and I out. called Angela. And that was great. And, and the, the thing about humility is like. God, it's such an amazing thing. It is amazing because I'm <gasps> like, so wow, I'm really use... important to, the, I really am important to him because I'm not benefiting him in any yeah, you're financial so or and you know what the people in his life are also important to me like Angela and Summer and I called Angela and even though I didn't actually think that I I knew I didn't intentionally do anything hostile even though people thought I did I still apologized for how my actions may have affected others yeah that's and that's, being, that's really the humility and I did saying. the same thing with to 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 to, to the other the Astrid girl because even though I was so hurt, I was Whatever trying. she does is not your business. It's, um, no, but it, it... It affected you, but it's still... You can't police other people's shit. 
You can only but just, I just own your stuff. I just felt like well, all she right. attacked, but he apologized, which was cool. Right? Yeah, that was very, very. That was a really, really stand up. Yo, and like I had That's to stand like, up. I thought I was texting. So let me just try to explain this. I'm texting you right about the meeting. Yeah, I remember. And, and you're giving me like what I knew at the time was like some bullshit. Because I knew you were being influenced by her. I knew the whole time. I'm like, I, I even texted you because I wanted to give you an out. I'm like, yo, are we <clears throat> still on for me speaking at your meeting? And you're like, oh, I didn't know if you had confirmed or whatever, which I did. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I, I got someone else. And I was like, all good. Right. And I literally am in a room with my friend Derek, who's shooting heroin right in front of me. And we're about to drive him to the airport and I'm in like this weird place and I'm calling Astrid who I'm so afraid of. God, you are just slippery places. Bam, uh, bam, bam. No, but I'm calling her and I'm afraid. And now I'm starting to text with her cause she finally texted me back because I was like, yo, I'm like really in a lot of pain right now. And like, I didn't have any kind of crazy intentions. And she's like, we were in this crazy text thing while I'm watching my brother's employee, Derek, who's a long old friend of mine who's finally ready to get sober, but he's shooting up because he's sick before he goes to the airport. And he's now in Kentucky and I'm sponsoring him because oh, he has 90 days almost. Oh, that's awesome. And we talk all the time, but I was in this such a inc- crazy, that day was so emotionally draining for me because I had, and after we drove him to the airport, I got back home and I talked to Astrid on the phone. And it was just like, I was just like, a, everyone hates you. You, you fucking, mm, you're like a, a fucking, you're like place. a wolf. And every, and the way that video looked oh. and you obviously were trying to cap. And I was just like, you know what? Like, oh my God, it was just so hard that day. It was so gnarly. Like, it was just such a hard day. And I'm just so glad it's all behind me. And I learned a lot from it. And like, and, um, you know, I just don't want to. Yeah, but those are those times we have to say, God, can you please help me not beat myself up over this? No, I, I'm not. I have shameful stuff, even but, the but, but, but stuff. I don't. But I honestly don't think that there's anything for me to be ashamed no, of. No, I think he's good now. He's just reiterating what happened. Yeah, right. okay. I, I don't actually believe that there's anything for me to but be it, ashamed of. But like I said, of. back to like, let's Did look you at what I'm saying. Let's like, look at the good stuff in it. Like but, 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 I said, but, but, how nice on. it is that you recognize the importance of your value, your friendship. For sure, I tell him that all the time. But but here's the thing about like what I do. Like that video about me relapsing, like I would never post anything if I really thought about like the repercussions of that post. Mm -hmm. I can't, I have Mm -hmm. to just tell my truth and post things, tell my truth because that's who I am. And it's no one's good. People are going to be touched, but they're not always going to be touched in a good way. And that's just the way it is. If you think about it, even what we, this podcast, there's going to be a certain amount of repercussion and people and haters and this and that. Like, so I can't to speak truth. You just got to have to kind of exactly do it. Oh my God. You can't, you can't have everybody love the, but, blood. but you're, but you're right. That in particular, that particular we situation, learn to be more careful. Yeah. We definitely learn to be more yeah, careful. That was a, well, that's gnarly. what that word discernment means. Yeah. Mm, what is that? Discernment is like you, you don't do things hastily. Mm. You think about it. What's the repercussion? But that's like my Should whole I hang MO. out with that person? But that's that pause when agitated and ask God who he wants me to be. Sometimes he wants me to be a quiet lady or, mm. or, or a good employee or just to just be, be still. Keep your mouth shut. Sometimes he wants me to be a mouse. Yeah. Well, but I'm not of, used to yeah. going to God. When I'm going to ego, and we live in so it's so hard because we live in such a influenced ego influenced world yeah. that we have to like whew, I need to come down and, and that's what's so cool about having some influence mm-hmm. as and and what I'm trying to do and inf- affect people in a different mm-hmm. way and be like, this is actually what's cool right is this humility and this kind well, that's of- how you lose vulnerability you exactly. learn to lose you're like yeah. okay this was a good thing like what am just... i what's the good in this what is what is the good in this like i started out saying there's a pony in the horse shit i gotta find it mm. i gotta find the good in this otherwise i'm not going to be able to pull my bootstraps up and get back out there i have to see that you know what i may have made a lot of mistakes i may have done things but i'm not what i've done 
I've just made those mistakes, and hopefully I've learned along the way that I don't have to repeat them and I don't have to hurt people along the way. Because it doesn't feel good when I hurt people because then I have to make amends. And then when I make amends, like I had, or I have to forgive them because then I hate them if I have to make amends to them. And there's this whole little bitter kind of, so it's like learning how to pause and learning how to like, wow, maybe if I take what I've learned and make it wisdom instead of experience, like learn from it, like be wise, get, get a little wiser. That's why age is so great. I mean, I'm 50, going to be 58. It is. So there's. I you couldn't know, have done this ten years ago. I wouldn't have. You wouldn't have done this, this. all. This, and I and I all I ever think about is how I'm ten years late. No, Charlie no. D'Amato is eighteen. She's seventeen. It doesn't matter. Twenty five million. I'm thirty seven. Yeah, and I'm barely count- gonna hit ten k yes, on YouTube. But, I'm just so. But fucked how up. about this? Those ten k. May affect a hundred k. No, I know it's great. And I'm you just know what? I because you're you, you're delivering a different the battle. I have. I have. A, yeah, you're delivering a different message. You're For delivering sure. something of depth and weight. I yeah, I'm agreeing with you. Feeling, I'm just saying it's, I have a feeling that this, like, because it, the intention behind it and the healing space. Do, do do you feel like where you're able to open up, like the podcast environment creates sort of a healing environment. I have a feeling over time, maybe 10 years or something, this might be the long-lasting, more popular, sustaining thing, maybe. Yeah. Possibly. You mean like in my world? In your world. Well, I mean, you may good do movies or whatever, but... I agree. The fact that it's, you're why, doing it because it's your... Well, the other thing is your, your passion, passion, too, yeah. but... But no, 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 but you're right, because this is a thing that you can always do. And this is a thing that well, that's you're, why you're more being driven that's from why, the inside. That's this why more and more inside. people are doing this. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it's coming from a different place. So I have it's, a feeling in the long term it might really be the it's icing like, on the cake for this sure. This is the heart mind experience, not the mind mind. Yeah. Like this is the heart mind stuff you're doing. You're 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 ta- you're you're coming from a heart place For this sure. is like i really want to help other people yeah. like and i want to touch them in a way that they can feel a part of like it's not so like black and white like come to church yeah. get saved it's like when people go "Ooh, dude i can't do that but you're saying it's a process you really are in a process like your heart opens it's like a rose does not go bing it takes time to flower and mm-hmm. open, and this is a process. It's like, what's crazy is it actually was more about like us just healing. Each like, other. This is good for us. Like the You're three like, of us. The three of like, us. Yeah, yeah. Like whoever, like, uh, like this is something that I need to do for me. And that's why it will, and I think it will help well, other people time, too, but like we actually need to do it. Every time you go with the intention of being of service, you get served. Yeah, for sure. And I, and it's almost weird that I know that. What were you going to say when she said about the mouse thing? I feel like you had something. The mouse? Yeah, she said sometimes God wants to be quiet like a mouse and you like Oh yeah, well, speaking of, you know, Astrid, she's the one always whoever can put the this is what she says, whoever is able to put the brakes on the first you know, like back down is the winner. Mm-hmm. But that's Alan on all across the board. Isn't oh, it? really? Yeah, I mean, that's an hour on But it's saying. true. Like, if you can put the brakes Remember on. Remember that thing? You want to read those 10 things on your phone? Oh, sure. Sure. We can close out on that. Okay. Because you know my husband's. Yo, this is definitely one of the longer ones. I know, right? It's kind of cool. Two, two hours and 20 minutes. Well, it's great. I feel like we've had mm. such a great conversation. Yeah. I feel like I've gotten really close to you. and I, yeah. we've, we've, That's what I'm talking about, the podcast. No, it's it, great. It it's does like, this I feel thing. Like, like, I, you know, it's, I feel like, wow, we could do a lot of things. Dude. Yeah. Like, I'm, with my knowledge and yeah. chutzpah and my experience kidding? in life, it's like, oh, my God. And I have, I have the same kind of crazy go 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 energy it's like let's do it yeah the proof is right there on her ankle 
I know. I got, I <laughs> got whacked out on a weed whacker. You're so gnarly. I, I know. love it. I love okay, it. Here we go. Let's see. Yeah, we'll definitely do this again. Yeah. Oh, you sent me. To something. be honest with you, I think sometimes the second and third time I do podcasts with certain people, I know it they're the so best. Oh, it was like, on the feed with like Pat Victoria and, and Jason have been on I multiple times. I love Jace. He's yeah. so. But cool. you have you you've never even met Victoria. No, but I Yo, love Jason. I'm I like, can't. oh my god, he's my fan. No, we're we're gonna do. We're basically done. We're gonna to do one i want to do one with you and can't find Victoria. it sorry okay here it is this is the how to avoid playing god and wait wait this is from old aa this is an earlier aa pamphlet how to avoid playing god one offer no advice unless asked two listen to other people's dreams and help them in the way they wish to be helped Three, encourage them to find their own strength. Four, reserve judgment at all times. Five, admit that you don't know all the answers. Six, build confidence in the person until their own judgment becomes clear. Seven, have faith in the overall righteousness of God's purpose in this world and in the next Eight, dwell on what is right instead of what is wrong. Nine, realize the core of divine being is in each person. Respect it. Mm. Ten, never discount the other person's good intentions. I, I, the, the, the one about not giving advice unless it's asked for <laughs> is a great... Dude, that's a why do you one. think it's number one? Wow. Oh, number I'm one. I'm always like telling Oleg like... But then you, it's, you, you rob the person of the growth that makes them feel good about who they are as a person. I just think that's right. really profound. And I like how it's from old AA, from like... Old you know, school. Yeah, right. old school. Old like, school. what do you mean old AA? Like, it's... it's 30s, 40s, 50s. 30s, right. 40s. Those are the pamphlets they would hang out. They would hand, stand them out. And then they also had on the back of it, which is pretty cool. So, so that's not in the new book. No, it was an old pamphlet. And at the end of it, they had the, they had the uh, serenity prayer. And they also had an Indian prayer. It's called an Indian prayer. Great spirit, may I not render judgment upon another until I have walked for one moon in his moccasins. Whoa, I love that. Like, I can't judge Trump even. No. I just can't. No, no. I'm not, I don't know Trump. what is. He's the world's greatest comic, I think. No, but don't even <laughs> but say anything. I don't know. Then don't yeah. say anything. I haven't walked a, a moon in his shoes or whatever. His it's, moccasins. His moccasins. Right. All right, thanks for listening, guys. Bye, you guys. Good night. Great night. That was-